That's a vampire. Hello. <laughs> That's where Hello. we start. <laughs> Welcome to another exciting episode of Baggage Claim D and I am Matt, your host and dungeon master. Uh, here are our exciting, wonderful players, all looking so great. Uh, we have Kanan right above me, played by Abigail. Faris Salimian, played by Jevin. Ezekiel, played by Brandon, a guest player. Anira, played by Sky. Harriet, played by Haley, and Zarius, played by George. Thank you for joining us this day. So. Uh, does anyone have anything they are dying to get out there in the open on the internet? Um, our sponsor could be played by Canada Dry, <laughs> but we're still they, waiting. Yeah, we're could waiting be. on it. It's 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 <laughs> the check is in the mail. Uh -huh. we it's you know it's all they're on their way. Yes, yeah, so we stand <laughs> with you, but do you stand with us? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the question. <laughs> Abby's drinking Canada Dry out of a wine glass. It's good. Um, what else are we going to use it for? Kombucha? <laughs> <laughs> the, why, I mean, why you could that put was like... Canada Dry's complete opposite was kombucha. <laughs> you could put like it wine is... in a wine glass. It's but... polar up. Nope. Who would do that? I don't drink. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> only only the booch. <laughs> only the kombucha. Yeah, only the booch. Or like grape juice soup. Yeah, whatever. No. <laughs> All right. Only the booch. <laughs> well, without uh, further ado, um, I had a hard time writing this session, so we may end up ending a little bit early, so it depends on how all involved you all want to be, but um, we could start out with our recap, led by Haley. Um, do you want a certain mood of music? Uh, I mean, this is fine. Okay. It's just, it's, it's a normal, normal recap. All right, sounds great. <laughs> well, take it away whenever you're ready. Okay. I'm reading from my phone, so. You're good. <laughs> Last week on The Vagabonds, our party of adventurers made their way into the infamously gloomy and paranoid city of Haversteep, the path towards the city extending them a very intimate welcome to the sobering and sickening display of Haversteep's and Tadriel's cruelty before the Vagabonds parted ways with their companion Zeline and then one another as they individually entered the city to network and investigate under manufactured identities with simple clothes acquired by Varus on their backs and hopes of resistance on their hearts. Anira made her way to an open gardening position situated right by Tadriel's castle, where she found a rather struggling garden and a rather struggling older grave digger, Ezekiel Rosenfeld, played by our new player, Brandon. Uh, Varus embraced his skills with the arts and settled in within the propaganda department where he designs posters under the supervision of Tip, a woman who has revealed herself to be in support of Varus's controversial poster messages and his charming looks. Zarius headed to a local tavern, the Tipsy Salmon, where he positioned himself with a front seat, front seat view of the tavern's patrons, their motivations, and their prevalent inability to hold down solid food. Harriet returned to her youth landing a position at the blacksmith Forge Georgeman, where she similarly began to involve herself within pre-existing resistance efforts within the city. But when it comes to resistance, Kanan situated herself with a truly personal experience, suiting up with armor and sword as she joins the guard and follows her curiosity to learn about the true allegiances of her coworkers and superiors. Perhaps there's still a chance for the sun to shine bright through the deep gloom that chokes Haversteep. Find out tonight on the Vagabonds. <laughs> Excellent. Great job. Okay. That was great. So that uh, that pretty much brings us in. I'm going to bring in some sound effects here. Put us in the right place. Because you know it's we got to hear the crows and rain and all that. Um, all right. So last we... Uh, where we actually ended the session was before the end of Kanan's um, second week. So... And we hadn't done Zarius's end of week yet either. So we have a few things to take care of there. We're going to be jumping in kind of in the middle. As a reminder to the players, uh, it is a whole week, so you can do a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, don't think you have to treat it like a single day, because you got seven of those. So feel free to, like, take your time and really, you know, do a bunch of stuff. If it's too much, I'll tell you, but chances are it's not going to be too much. Um, so just as a reminder, I know this whole setup is a little bit uh, unconventional, but I think that it's really a fun thing to try out, and I had a good time doing it last week. So, again, if you have stuff that you want to do and you're like, oh, I don't know if you'll let me, I'll probably let you. Just, you know, go for it. Um, so, okay. 
Um, we left off with Kanan in the midst of her second week. So, Kanan, what would you like to do? All if right, I remember I right, leave. you were supposed to be guarding the body, right? Yes, okay. I'm guarding the body right now. I just finished speaking to Oots. Okay, got it. All right. Um, so, you get out there, and this thing stinks, right? It's, I mean, it's, it's not good. Um, but you out there, and you're, you guard dutifully. An hour passes, another 30 or 40 minutes passes, and finally you see a, a small group of people, maybe four or five people, all dressed in um, very, you could call it, uniform clothing. They all look very similar to how Arcturus is dressed. A, night, like, a nice, like, um, tight, organized clothing, very um, uniform in appearance. It, they have a, several ribbons across the front of the chest. Um, they appear to be... So I gotta change the mood here. Um, they uh, they appear to be um, what you would recognize as the scries. You've seen them around town. You have come to kind of know who they are. Uh, maybe not personally, but you know you know of them. Um, you see three of them approach with uh, one that looks to be like an apprentice, in following behind with a notepad, taking notes on everything. Um, as the three approach, they they raise their hand to you, and they say, ah. Uh, the, the one in the front, it's a, uh, looks like a half-elf woman who, um, it's older, especially for half-elf. She's maybe like, uh, you, you wouldn't, you can make an intelligence check if you want to guess her age exactly, but, um, she looks older, which is surprising for a half-elf. Um, she's a very severe expression on her face. Like, this looks like a hard woman. Um, she's very thin and, uh, sort of, um, yeah, <laughs> even with the saving throw. <laughs> You don't know. She she looks old, older than any half elf you've ever seen. Um, but she has a very um, sharp look about her as she looks around. She's very focused, uh, very perceptive. It seems. She approaches and says, "Yes, uh, where is the body?" Oh, um, this is it over here. Are you here to pick it up? Can I help you in any way? She just holds her hand out for you to stop talking and gestures towards the body to other counterparts um, who immediately begin to, they, they approach it and they start to pull out like components and, and stuff from, um, you would recognize these to be stuff used for magic. Um, and she approaches uh, next, like in between the, the other two that are there with the apprentice just scribbling notes as fast as he can behind them. Um, and she says... Well, this is a sorry state of things, isn't it? Get to work. And then crosses her arms and just watches the other two. Uh, if you'd like to try to get a look at what they're doing, you can. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, make a perception check. Investigate perception. No. Yeah, because you're not, unless you really want to try to like poke between them and stick your head in there and see. <laughs> we'll go with, I might. We'll go with just looking. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah. 11. It, it, not great, but um, you do see they're doing some kind of magic. You recognize this. You've seen uh, Zarius cast magic. You've seen Harriet and, um, and Ira also use magic. You yourself have used magic. You've trained in it. So you're, you do recognize that they're doing something. You don't have any idea what. But as they're casting these things, you see different flashes of light, different symbols start to appear, different sigils. Um, and after about a minute, two minutes of them performing whatever this is that they're doing, the smell stops instantly. And, you know, you got a, a pretty good, you could see parts of the body kind of hanging off, like the arms hanging off of the little cot that was there. And um, as they put the, the body back there, um, the smell is gone, the uh, sort of just... Uh, how do I say this? The intrinsic reaction that you have being exposed to that kind of decay is gone. It's like nothing's there. Um, the half-elf woman turns and says, All right, the gravekeeper will be here shortly. Goodbye. And turns and oh. leads the cohort off. You can say something she if you'd like to. That. But... I don't think she's down for conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So they leave, um, and they just head back into the city. Um, 
Is there anything you want to do in the meantime while you wait for Grape Digger to show up? I want to poke around the body. Okay. And look at it and um, see if I can, I don't know, take note on whatever it was they did. Okay. So, yeah, it's just wrapped. It's just like they took a sheet. Whoever wrapped up this body just took a sheet and threw one side over and then the other side over, and that's it. So it's, you could just unwrap it if you'd like to. Yeah. Okay, so make an investigation check. You take a look, and the body is, it's still in a state of decay. It's just really strange because you can't, like, smell or see anything. Um... Like, that, that you can't smell anything that is obvious decay. You know, it's not like pieces are falling off or anything like that. Um, but it's strange because you, you, you recognize in this state it should be rank as it was before. Um, what you notice is that it looks like, um, like there's a sort of gloss over it. Like, you've seen, you've seen wood, you know, coated in lacquer before. It, it looks like that. It's that kind of, like it's been sealed in some way. But you're not quite sure what or how. All right, I'll just close it back up okay. and yeah. All right. About uh, maybe an hour later, um, you see a, an older human man approaching with a hat and a shovel and a <laughs> cart. <laughs> I'm going to say you have a cart. Ezekiel. Yes. <laughs> Unless you're Time planning on just over the shoulder. Um, but yeah. Not with the 10 strength, I'm not, no. <laughs> well, you see this man approaching. And Ezekiel, you see a tall tabaxi, very uncomfortably looking in armor, um, <laughs> standing next to a body. Hello, I'm here to pick up a body. I'm the grave digger. Oh, uh... Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm the body. Um. Yes. Thank you. All right. Need any help with anything? I'm, I'm all right. He struggles to get a grip on this body. Here, here. I'll pick it up for you. <laughs> All right, just put it in the cart over there. <sighs> All right. uh, do many people, I mean, do you pick up many bodies that, you know, people who have just kind of fallen off of walls? Fallen off a wall? Oh, uh, not sometimes. Well, usually not in that way, no. But plenty of people die here, and plenty of bodies to be buried. Yeah, um... Uh, so... <laughs> I had a question. It's in my head. Uh, so... I don't know... Do, do they... usually not smell? rank at all? Um, I, I, I'm not certain. I I don't think I would notice anyway. I've been doing this for a long time. Well, I think you'd know the smell of a dead body. You know, doing it for a long time, and this one doesn't smell. Uh, it doesn't smell... Mm, no, this is about normal. Nothing unusual for me. Well, how... How do they make it not smell? Um, I, I don't know. Were you, were you here when they came? Yes. That's what it sounded like. I don't know. They, they do something to the body. I'm not really sure. Not my well, business. I just bury them. Well, do you need any help burying them? I don't have much in the likes of doing this evening. Uh, it's very unusual for a guard to offer to help bury a body. Oh, right. Well, you go on your way and I'll stay here and guard the place. You're new at this, aren't you? Quite so. 
Yes, well, I really must be on my way. Well, I'll call you if we need any more Barian. You do that. Oh, I'm Lana, and you are... Ezekiel. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um... <laughs> Um, all right, uh, bye. <laughs> uh, farewell. And I will begin to walk off with my cart as I'm walking away. Maybe or maybe not in earshot. Uh, riding on a barrel, you say? No, it's not the stupidest death I've ever heard of. No, I've heard much worse, trust me. And, um, uh, mumbles all the way off into the distance. <laughs> good okay <laughs> all right well, like we'll, p- well we'll pick up with ezekiel in a moment um but kanan at the end of kanan's week i guess it's kanan what else would you like to do for the either the evening or the rest I... of the week on oh gosh i don't remember what day but i'm supposed to meet um Nimsis at the salmon place you are that'd be tomorrow um, that would be okay. Then in the morrow, I will look for this salmon place. Okay. All right. So the next day comes, and uh, you find that you're assigned to work as, as usual, as happens, you know? Um, you're assigned for a shift that's supposed to block out the rest of the day. So. Uh, it, it would have you just patrolling the outer wall. That's it. So, um, you spend most of the day doing that. Um, but by the time your shift is over, um, yeah, you have enough time that you could you could try to find the, the, the tipsy salmon if that's something you'd like to do. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, just make a survival check. Twenty-six. Yeah, you pretty. Yeah, you've been there before. You managed to find your way back through fairly quickly. Um, you know, it's, it is a maze-like city, so there's a chance of that. But you managed to find your way through pretty quickly, and you get there in good time. Um, you get there about a half an hour, maybe forty-five minutes before you were supposed to meet him. Are you wearing your guard clothing, your guard armor and clothing, and everything? Or are you going around in civilian clothes? Um, I'm not wearing the armor. Okay. But yeah. otherwise wearing the guard undergarments? Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, so yeah, you enter in, and this place is uh, kind of a dive. It's kind of a, you know, really gross, skeezy place. Um, but you enter in, and there's a few this people where, inside. Huh? This is where Zarius works? Yes. Okay. Um, and Ira, you have seen... I don't know if you've seen anybody... Um, aside from that first week. So I was having the D100 rolls for it. But anyway. She's uh, right, Harry. At one time, they just said hi in the oh, market. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so, Kanan, you enter in. There are maybe five or six people kind of drinking in the different... You know, they're spread out. There's two people together, but that's it. Everybody else is kind of on their own, just deep in the cups. Um, you know, really just escaping the drudgery of life in Haverstep. You see the, the human guy behind the bar, um, as well as a, a tall... Very pale skinned tiefling with white hair. I thought it was a red skinned tiefling. Yeah, I'm talking about Zarius. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a week. It's fine. <laughs> you know. Um. Zarius got full yeah. body tattoos. Zarius, yeah. Week. I hadn't gotten to He's that part yet. Now. Like, come on, stop spoiling it. I was gonna like do a dramatic change and everything in the picture and... <laughs> oh. Well, Kaden's gonna walk up to Zarius and be like, uh, howdy, uh, I'm back again. I really loved the drink last time. If, if you could grab one for me again. Yes, of course, I'll get right on that. Um, and Zarius will walk over to the bar and just like pretend to make something, but put like water or apple juice or something in a glass that's not alcoholic. Okay. 
Make a uh, sleight of hand check. So just stealth, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, maybe maybe if my character sheet ever. Here we go. Twenty, pretty good. Yeah, uh, I think his name was Dan. Dan doesn't notice at all. Um, yeah. Completely, yeah, oblivious to what you're doing. And it looks like a regular alcoholic drink. Yeah. Here you are. Made this one special for you. Oh. <laughs> She'll take a sip and be like, "Oh, thank you." Yeah, Thank you. Sure, that's what you need after a long day of protecting the city. Oh, for sure. Um, but I just wanted, and Kanan will drop her voice real low, just kind of grab your shoulder and be like, I just wanted, um, thought it, you might want to know that I'm meeting here with someone, red skin tiefling, goes by the name Anensis. Oh, yes, he's um, sort of a regular as of late. Do you know anything about him? Um, I'm not sure what I know and what I wrote down from other people, but he's a teacher of some kind. <laughs> you know that he's a teacher and that he doesn't believe that necromancy should be used for war. Um, yeah. And that he trained yeah. Arcturus. Okay, I wasn't sure if Zarius knew that one. Because yeah. I wrote that down, but I didn't know. Yeah. Um, I believe he's a teacher of some kind. He doesn't like... um. The arts that uh, Demixus would have specialized in, and he seemed to have trained Arcturus. So. Oh. Um, well, he caught me healing Harriet in the square. Oh. So, <laughs> please well. just have my back yeah. if something goes wrong, even if that means not doing anything and contacting the rest of the party later. <laughs> gotcha. Of course, um, I have only run into um, the one we talked about last time. Um, I'll see if I can track some of the others down. Okay. Um, thank you so much for this drink. I'll have a yes. wonderful day. And Enjoy. Let me know if you need more. All right. I'll be back next week. And she'll go <laughs> sit down and kind of an away from most people area okay yeah yeah all the tables in the place are spread out pretty far it seems like this this is the kind of place for people who don't like to be around other people so yeah, um, minimize the getting puked on yeah <laughs> um but yeah you sit down and about a half an hour goes by before um you see you hear the door open and you see nensis enter and he looks um in, in his instructing attire so he's very he looks very professional um but he comes in, he's got a large book tucked under his in under his jacket. And he comes in and just says, uh, just waves towards the bartender, who Dan quickly makes him his drink and starts to bring it over. And he just, he sees you and immediately just goes in and sits down at the table across from you. Well, hello. So, what is your name? Uh, Lana. Lana. Why aren't you at the necropolis? I'm new to the area, and I have, I mean, despite what you saw in the square the other day, most of my skills lie in hitting things, so. A shame that you believe that. Your skills are powerful indeed. I sense that you have a great gift. And now, why did you come to Haversteep? Oh, I, I just left uh, New Calamon after everything happened with uh, the fate draw of family and, and whatnot, and thought I'd leave somewhere to find work. Make a deception check. Kind of squints and looks you over. So I'm to believe that a guard has recently moved here who has magical abilities, who was previously enslaved in New Calamon. 
And all you want is to work as a guard? Yes. Maybe people are a little more naive where you come from, but that is not the case here at this table. So, why did you come here? I heard stories and I wanted to see what it was like for myself. What kind of stories did you hear? Well, I, I think it's wild that there's just an angel here. And well, I haven't seen much in the likes of angels. <laughs> Emphasis on much. <laughs> And I was curious about the weather. Can I insight check him? <laughs> sure. What are you trying to find out? I want to know if he's thinking about turning me in or something. Okay. <laughs> this guy's hard to get a read on. Mostly he's just sitting and waiting for you to finish explaining yourself. So that, that's really all you can get with that kind of check. So he asked you why you're really here, and, and you're still in that explanatory phase. He's just waiting for you to explain. Um, yeah, I, I like to collect stories. And I also heard that there was a an old building um, within the borders of well, the, the whole Haversteep area. It's not the Haversteep town. But I wanted to find it. And what about this old building attracted you? The books. <laughs> so, you're a magically powerful also physically powerful, according to your own description, Tabaxi, who left New Calamon and came here to be a guard and look at books. So we have a magical scholar on our hands who does not want to go to the necropolis. Well, I'm not much in the way of necromancy. They teach all kinds there. <laughs> necromancy happens to be my specialty. I thought Necropolis was kind of necro-centered. It's a dramatic title for the City of the Dead. It's a marketing strategy to bring in the youth. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I know I'm not all that youthful, but it didn't draw me in. <laughs> Obviously. Sorry. Well. Why are you out here healing a dragonborn in the city, in public? Well, she got hurt. And you know, a punch like that can do a lot to, to just an average person. But you're no average person, are you? All that flailing about prior to forcing one of the other guards to strike her. Clever, but obvious. <laughs> obvious? In what way? As if you would ever miss someone standing right in front of you. Well, I've got to say the armor kind of does a toll on my abilities. I thought as much. The Order of, the of Xenia is typically very good about teaching their disciples the combative arts. Uh, 
I'm sorry, sir. And Kanan's voice is going to get really low. He's going to say, um, are you turning me in? I'd like to know sooner rather than later so I can prepare myself to die. Why would I turn you in? Have you done something wrong? Well, um, being a guard, I'm kind of familiar a bit with the law around here and doing magic and, and the order of Xenia aren't things welcome. Yes. But you didn't come here to be welcome, did you? No, sir. I did not. And you don't want to go to the school. Well, I've already... Are you talking about the school that's in the building? And you the don't... Library? You don't want to make a career out of being a guard. You came to see the angel. You're not leaving many options for your real purpose here, are you? No. So, you must have friends. Not many. <laughs> All right, not many. Well, if you're not many friends are looking to do something effective, I suggest you find more friends. Are you... Are you wanting me to go to this school? I don't understand if if you're trying to get an upper hand here and you want me to do something or if you're giving advice or if you're just going to turn me in the moment I walk out the door. I have no interest in satisfying the demands of that tyrant. And he says this this part loud enough for everybody in the bar to hear. My desire is to restore this place to what it could be, what it was once before. But I and my eleven cannot do it alone. So you are going to help us. I will. Um, it's not much for me to share, but there are more of us. Good. And I can go to the school. I don't know if that helps. Unless you're going to enroll as a student. I think that, well, if your friends are worth their salt, there is a place under the school that you should know about. A messaging center kept like a library um, here one moment you see him pull out just this lump of clay and he begins to whisper under his breath and pass his hand over it and you see most of the clay just fall away and a key form in place he hands it to you and it's solid like brass key at this point he sets it down in front of you this is the key to the entrance you will use this and you will destroy the messages that are intercepted. They take several weeks to process, but this will allow you and your friends, as well as me and mine, to operate with a level of impunity. Okay, um, when should I do this? In two weeks. Sorry, three weeks. <laughs> My math is wrong. <laughs> In three weeks. To the day? Give or take a day. We're not finished yet. Oh, and, uh, just so you know, um, 
I don't know, understand my appreciation. My real name's Kanan. Kanan. I am still Nensis. Uh, well, I figured. <laughs> um, but I'm from Mastica, if you know anything of the place. I do. It's not every day you see a tabaxi, genuine and in the flesh. <laughs> right, especially around here. <laughs> especially one that practices the Order of Xenia. You might well, have the, ever want. those around here fooled, but your movement is too fluid. Just be well, careful. Thanks. Will do. And now at this Xenia library, did you find Arcturus? After the fact, yes. Yes. He was my most gifted pupil. I was saddened to hear of his passing, and yet no one is supposed to talk of it. No one is allowed to speak. This man served as a leader of the scribes for nearly ten years, and now it's like he was never there. Well, this, I don't know, he was he contacted us and asked for our help, me and, and my group. Um, we couldn't get up here so quickly. Um, we were preoccupied, um, championed by something else, if you might, um, <laughs> you might say. Um, But yeah, I'm sorry we didn't get there in time. Every man must meet his destiny. Well, Lana, see to it that you take care of that uh, message receptacle facility. It is under the school. Search the grounds and you'll find it. There's a hidden entrance on the south side. If you go on the to the day in three weeks. There will be no guards present, thus no loss of life. That is my ideal. I recognize the need for change, but I refuse to take life. The eleven with me are not so strong in their conviction. But Well, we will try our best and if we do happen to run into anyone, we can just knock them out. Very well. Uh, I must be on my way. Hey, Matt. Yes. Seeing this conversation kind of start to wrap up and Zerus was kind of watching very intently the whole time. Um, he's gonna bring over a drink to Kanan um, and set the sending stone that um, Octurus had given him on the table and just kind of roll it over to um, Nensis and be like, this is a gift from your old friend and how I got in contact with this. I um, probably won't be needing it anymore. Thank you. I am curious who holds the other. And he takes the yeah. stone and throws it in his coat. <laughs> Very well. Well, Lana, I will leave you to your guarding duties. And for you, Barkeep, and he looks over at you, Zarius, don't be a stranger next time. <laughs> Very well. He gets up and kind of like just stylishly flares his coat, straightens himself out, and, you know, canes his way out of the, uh, out of the, uh, the bar there. Well, um... That went Frank. surprisingly well? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, one of your finest customers? 
Yes, um, I was a little worried. I got a little tense there for a couple of minutes. Yeah, I wasn't sure if he wanted me alive or not. Um, but if you'll sit down and enjoy this drink with me, um, she'll say louder so your boss hears her. <laughs> Um, you know, as I finish it, I'd love to tell you more. Of course. Sarah's will join him. Cool. And Kanan's gonna recap pretty much the whole thing. Yeah. And I mean, give Zarius the key. Be like, uh, I don't want to be caught with this on me. Um, quite often, I'm, I don't, I don't have much privacy. Um, in the barracks, so um, I figure you might have some more or better places to hide it. <laughs> yeah, um, got it. Yeah. But there's some sort of message center. They intercept. Did he, he said intercept messages? Yeah. Uh, maybe we shouldn't be using such things to communicate then. <laughs> um, luckily, I haven't yet. That's good. Maybe we should See let we everyone know. Yes, I've, I've only run into you and our artsy friend. Um, I'll see if I can track everyone down this week. All right. I'll run by the um, the garden and uh, blacksmiths tonight. Uh, see if I can't just give them a message real quick okay. without giving a message. Yeah, maybe let them know where everyone else is. So it cannot be on the same okay. page, as it were. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll be back for another strong drink just like this uh, next week. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> and Kanan will walk out and just run as fast as she can to the blacksmith and then the garden. Okay. So Kanan's just booking it across town. Yeah. Throwing stealth to as the wind. As stealthy as she can. Okay. Well, that's a god. Check. Yeah, make a stealth check. <laughs> Ten. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're going quick. So, a little faster than most people are able to move. Uh, so, it is... But you're wearing your, your guard clothing. Um, it does take you about a half an hour to reach the garden area. Fortunately for you, it's dark out. So, you know, no obliteration on on site um but you after exploring the grounds a little bit uh you do find um an ira there tending some plants and it's gonna hide behind like a rock or something and be like and that i mean gosh dang it veril <laughs> uh I'm, I'm hearing things, okay. Uh, that's new. Behind the rock, Veril! Who is talking to me? Uh, uh, the rose bush. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't cast any spells. What is... Where are the you? The rock is talking to you now. Just come over and respect it or something. Okay. She will stop tending the plant and walk over to this random rock that's just started talking to her with Kanan's voice. Also, why is there a giant rock in this garden? Uh, this wasn't here before. Henry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, garden was mostly rocks when you got there. <laughs> yeah. So, Veril, uh, don't message people magically. It's 
it's a good thing I can't do that anyway, so we're good. All right, bye. And then Kana's okay. gonna run off, but like awkwardly uh, near Ezekiel because she's good, not stopping at all. She rolled good, a ten. Good, good to see you. Okay. <laughs> She'll go back to take remember, the kids. Don't message strangers and ever speak. She'll wonder if that was a fever dream or not. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, and I think she went to the blacksmiths before that. Because it's closer, or was it farther? You said you're going to the garden first, so you went to the garden first. <laughs> okay, then I'll go to the blacksmith second. Okay, so you're running all over town. Um, yeah. But that's okay. So, you, uh, yeah, you go back um, over toward the the blacksmith shop, and you come around on the glass blower side of it, and you see it's a beautiful stained glass front and everything, but you cut through the alley around to the uh, blacksmith side. You can see the forge still glowing, but the light's dimming, you know, it looks like work is, is finishing up. Um, fire's going down and all that, so. You knock on the, on the door. All right, Perry, you, uh, in your room, hear this knocking down at the front entrance. Kind of like wait, you know, when you're home alone and you wait, <laughs> she's like, is someone else going to go get this? Okay. A moment later, you do hear George's door open. And he, he, he seems like he's doing the same kind of thing. Just the door okay. opens and he's like leaning out, you know. <sighs> she'll, lean, she'll like roll her eyes. She'll like lean out and be like, uh, is this a particular patron that comes at this hour or is this? Okay. Just making sure I've got it. <laughs> She'll kind of, you know, hobbling on the quarter staff like she does. Um, <laughs> I'll be, I'll be at over. the stairs, at the top of the stairs. I'll look down. Okay. She'll walk to the door and kind of open it. She like, hello. Um. Oh. Well, howdy! I heard that you could help me with any. Uh... Armor situation. I'm not wearing it. Uh, my it must my sword be a big here. problem with the armor then. If you know, it didn't even. You don't even have it on. Is it that warped? Yes, it's quite a problem. If you could show me around, uh, help me look at some. <laughs> She'll kind of look up at the stairs and just mouth like, guard. <laughs> Georgia starts to come down the stairs, and he's wearing one of those big long nightgowns um, yeah. with the cap and everything. Um, Iconic king. Yeah. He says, uh, I I'm sorry, um, Miss, uh, what is your name? Lana is my name. Miss Lana, um, we are open for normal operations tomorrow morning. Um, the guards know this. They uh, are not actually allowed to bother us after hours. Only the scribes can. Right. Um. Um. Perhaps. If how are you very... doing after uh, George hit you the other day? George. I I didn't. Um, my hit her. good old palio at the guards. George didn't hit me the other day. One of I'm just I just made up and. The guy's yeah. name is George. Oh, that's the other guy listening. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Harriet really doesn't know what lie you're trying to get her to agree with right now. <laughs> that is my brain, please. <laughs> um, you know, if you have a very urgent concern and she'll like r rummage around and like hand you like a piece of paper, you've got about 10 seconds. But if not, I'm sorry that your armor is seemingly destroyed, but uh, you could come back tomorrow. Well, oh my goodness. Will you please just step outside with me for a minute? Harry will just kind of like look at George and be like, I don't know what's happening, <laughs> and like step out. Okay. They still send messages magically. There's some message interception place. I don't know what they do. I'm not sure if I can um, do that. What do you mean? I mean, 
I, I can't just not. <laughs> Everyone else, but I, I could not just not um, send Jen messages at least like once a week. I don't care if they read them. I'm careful. All right. Um, just keep in mind, um, this is an angel and a bunch of people around uh, that may also be similarly strong. I don't know how strong an angel is, but Apollodux doesn't seem so easily defeated. So, um, just angel people are strong and just please be careful. I ran all around town just to let you know if you get caught and someone finds something fishy about it, not only you and all of us could die, but Jen could also die. So whatever you want to do with that, I need to go not be caught. Harriet will kind of take like a deep breath and loudly say like, well, I'm sorry that your armor's been giving you so many problems. Um, please come back tomorrow morning and we can get it this sorted out. And she'll close the door. <laughs> okay. And kind of give that George that like, is that normal? I'm still new here. Like, <laughs> kind yeah. of look, you know? <laughs> George kind of, he takes a moment and thinks and then kind of nods solemnly, like in understanding and says, you know, sometimes lice and crabs go through the barracks. So maybe she has a rash. Sometimes it happens. Um, <laughs> um, you know, maybe. Uh, you may just wash your hands at least. Um, I'll... I'll, I'll go do that. You know, maybe it would burn off anyways. We're around fire all the time. I think we're probably safe. Yeah. Still, you don't but, want uh, maybe, ooh, maybe, maybe we'll be able to help her tomorrow. But I, you know, I imagine maybe you'd be urgent with fleas and the such. I've never seen a, a cat person like her, so maybe she gets fleas. I don't know. I'm I, not sure. Uh, for sure. I need to get to sleep. Um, at this point, he turns around and um, you see him walking up the stairs, and you notice in his left hand he has that statuette mm -hmm. of the little angelic figure. Um, and he heads up the good stairs. night. Uh, good night. Heads into the room, shuts sure. up, closes the door. Yeah. Harriet will like go up to her room. Spin the pistol a couple times. And then put it back in her bag. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, Kanan, uh, I think you got about one day. If there's anything in particular you want to do. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. It's enough stress to... for me. <laughs> to Zarius. So, Zarius, that interaction happened towards the end of the week. Not at the end, but like, you know. If it were, if your week was like our week ended on Saturday, then let's say it would be like on a Thursday. Um, gotcha. So that happens towards the end. You still have a, a couple days to react, but um, you also have the entire beginning of the week. So, and I know I wrote in my notes that Varus was going to meet with Zarius to say no sending. Yeah. But I don't know when slash if that happens this week or next week. Or early what. in the week. Yeah. Okay. So that happened pretty early on in the week. Um, so Zarius probably would have spent, I don't think he would have done too much except for just meeting with like, you know, Varus, Kanan. Um, he would have gone and just tried to like put eyes on everyone just to make sure everyone's okay. Okay. Like, check in on Anira. He knows she's at the garden. Yeah. Um, and, but he also knows to only go at night. So he's not going to go get destroyed by Tadriel. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and he'll check in on um, Harriet as well. Um, but other than that, he'll probably just chill out at the bar. Okay. So um, we could start with um, just a general, so to just to find everybody and check in on them, make um, 
Let's just say two investigation checks. Shoot. If my character sheet loads. Yes, it does. One. Okay. And two. Nice, double 19s, okay. Um, so yeah, you managed to, over the course of two days, find everybody pretty easily. Um, you, you get a good layout of the town. You're pretty familiar with cities, like dense cities, growing up in Galston. So you got a good, you, you get there and you get a pretty good feel for the town, uh, even though, even through its divisions and the kind of winding alleyways and all that stuff. But you do find uh, everybody and just get eyes on them. This isn't like it, you know, you might yeah. have time to say a word or two, but pretty much you're just checking to make sure that they're still okay, still alive. Um, yeah. Okay. And he probably would have just like checked on Anira just because it's kind of weird to like walk into a garden. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but uh, for Harriet, he might have been like, you know, just off hours and would have stopped by and like, hey, if you need anything, you know, I work at this bar and just like try to make friendly conversation, but also kind of let her know where he's at. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, that's about all that he really has to do aside from meeting with people. It's already been done. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, serious bar business cards. Um, yeah. Hey, okay, swing on by. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, if there's anything in particular that you want to convey to everybody, then we'll we'll role play that out. Otherwise, we can move on. It's no big deal. Nah. No, okay. we're good. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, I think I'm going to make sure that I didn't have anything that I needed to tell you on your thing. On initiative, count 20. <laughs> yeah, Tadriel walks out into the town <laughs> and singles each of you out. <laughs> Tadriel walks into a bar. Yeah, when Tadriel walks into a bar <laughs> and all of you walk out dead. Um. <laughs> okay, so back at the beginning of the third week, um, we'll begin with Anira. So, Anira, all of these things have happened. You had a weird meeting with Kanan a day or two ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a really weird meeting. So it's a really weird meeting. Um, but behind you, a random rock. Yeah, behind some there. rock that <laughs> you just saw there. It's so weird. Um, but you you are free to do whatever you'd like with this week. Um, you you've learned a number of things just in being there. One of the things that you've learned is um, Tadriel's schedule. He doesn't sleep. Um, you've met Ezekiel, and you've learned that. Uh, Tadriel's mood seems to somehow affect the environment and nature. Okay. So. <laughs> Can Kanan actually carry the rock in? <laughs> um, for the first, so garden at night, except for one day, but I'll get to that. Uh, first day or two, I'd like to go back to the campus and try and see if I can find Nensis. Just like people watching, not like they only serve the finest beer, according to Soundtrap. Um, <laughs> uh, like just people watching, and if I see him like walking with his pupils, I'll kind of like trail. I'm not trying to be stealthy. I'm just trying to like see if I can find like his office or a classroom. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you're trying to track Nensis. Yeah. Is that what you said? Okay, sorry. Like if My... he if he calls me out, I'll like I won't like try to run or anything. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to be creepy about it. Yeah. Okay. So he's walking um, with his with his pupils. You do see him one day. Um, he's just walking through the the square, and he's kind of like lecturing as he walks. Um, but they all seem to be following him very diligently, taking notes. Um, and they all have like it's student wear, so like it's it's like pseudo uniform. But they do also have. It looks like they have their own magical implements. You see some with wands. You see some with like arcane focuses, rings, those kinds of things. So it, it looks like they are actually capable somewhat on their own. They're not like first year students or anything like that. Um, but as they walk through during the square, it's like a time between classes. You can very easily just follow them. Go ahead and make a stealth check, uh, or or unless you're not trying to stealth, you said right. Yeah, I'm not trying to stealth. Okay, okay. I'm just so yeah, you managed to, like... to. You can follow them pretty well. Um, Nobody overtly takes notice of you, but um, you aren't trying to hide yourself, so, you know, they can see yeah. you. It's not like you're invisible or anything. Um, <laughs> you do follow them. They kind of, they head down the center square towards the main major structure, and they hang a right off to, and they head down a little, like, dirt path that leads to a smaller, like, a, a standalone building that's kind of on its own. 
It's not like run down or dumpy or anything, but it's just a smaller structure that looks like it's either for his students in particular or his class or faculty or something, you're not sure. But all of the students follow mm -hmm. him, all 11 of them, and they all enter in there. So, taking a, a stock of the area, you do see that there's like a, a small, you know, it's like a, a beautification wall around um, the entire campus. And this is close to one side of that wall. So, um, it'd be close mm -hmm. to the the actual garden side. So, um, I think if I were to really lay it out in my head, it'd be west, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's close the, enough the that, yeah. Of, yeah, it's a bunch of just grids all over the place. I don't have them cohesive. Yeah, but, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my brain. Um, I would like to see if I could, like, if he's in an office or something. Sure. Maybe not with go. his pupils all there, but, like, you just, just, like, try and look around the building. With him. Yeah. Okay. I'll try and find him. Okay. So you, yeah, you can take a look around the building. Go ahead and make uh, an investigation check, and just see. This will this will serve to to see if you can get the layout of the building, see where he is inside of it, and also see like um, his schedule and anything. Twenty two. Excellent. Um, so you get a good sense of the building. It, it's just a set of offices. So it looks like this is his department's office. He has a major like a corner one, and then it looks like all of his pupils work in the different like um, rooms off to the sides. Some of them are for experiences. Sorry, this doesn't need to be on there. Need to be in street mode. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> LGK. Um, but it looks like there are a number of different purpose rooms. Some of them are for like experimentation and testing. Some of them are for practice. Most of them are just for study. Um, there seems to be a bunch of bookcases and stuff in there. Um, you see, you do see students like come and go kind of as they please. There's nobody like stopping them. There's nobody monitoring the entrances, but it does look like everyone knows each other. Um, mm -hmm. And after looking around for about an hour or two hours, you don't really see, you don't see Nensis leaving. Um, you, you don't really have his schedule down quite yet. Yeah. But I saw him go in the building. Yeah, he's just in there now. Okay. Could I try and find his office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know exactly which one it is. Easy peasy. Yeah. Cool. Can I go to his office? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know if you wanted to go in the building yet. Um, yes. Yeah, you just you hit the front door, open it up, and his office is the first door on the left. And the door is just open. Um, Can just I? Uh, I'll, I'll knock on the the door frame, just like. He looks up from you know taking some notes on on a piece of paper and looks up and says, "Hello." Uh, Hello. Who are you? If if I may have a moment of your time, uh, my name is Veril. Veril, uh, sit, please. And he gestures to the chair there. I will sit. Um, I I've spent some time sitting around campus, and I overheard you talking on how necromancy is not meant for war and combat. To that, I wonder what is it for then. He gives a, a kind of knowing smile, like you're about to get him on his hobby horse. Um, <laughs> he says, some indeed would use necromancy for violence. Some would use it to perversely extend their own lives. Some would use it to raise horrid creatures from the dead. I would suggest that necromancy is a, a way to preserve the past, a way to extend the memory of things that are lost. And occasionally it's neat to have a zombie cat running around. And you see up on the windowsill is a zombie cat that's like... <laughs> <laughs> I had one of those as a child. As a child? You must have been gifted. <laughs> or cursed, you might say. But that's neither here nor there. I was just curious. Because that's something I've been trying to think about myself for years, if what is the purpose of it, if not just for violence. Well, if you are a practitioner of these arts, you should be enrolled at the school. I, I wish I wasn't a practitioner, but you can't pick, I guess. Well. Plus I'm new the city and I don't know how I would get enrolled or how that works or... Well, yeah, I think one of the first steps might be speaking with an instructor who's maybe the head of a department which is what you're doing at this very moment <laughs> Would you like to be enrolled? 
What, what does it entail? It entails attending classes, taking tests, doing homework, studying with your peers, living on campus, subjecting yourself to the rules of the university. So if I weren't planning on being in town for a long while, it might not be the best idea? Yes, it requires several years of dedication. <laughs> I suppose it's not for me then. Uh, if I end up, if I... I was mostly curious on your thoughts on necromancy, I suppose. It's not often I hear people talking about it. It's kind of taboo, so to speak. Well, it is my field of expertise. Interesting. Do you, can I, um, I know I'm not one of your pupils, but can I keep poking your brain for just a few more seconds? Of course. Do you know anything about the Anthracene? The Anthracene. From my studies, as I do a roll real quick. <laughs> I have read the name before. They are a an ancient earth-worshipping cult, I believe. Uh, some strange attachment to nature, but uh, mostly peaceful. It seems that uh, they wanted to be sequestered, if I remember correctly, and left alone. But the expansion of civilization or something like that drove them to interfere with the rest of society. And to my knowledge now, they have disappeared or retreated into their original home? I'm not sure. Interesting. I've, I've also heard the same, so I was, I'm just trying to get more information as I can. Well, they, I won't hold much more of your time. Uh, I understand it's weird having a random person just walk into your office. I, I'll be going. It's um, far stranger to have a random person walk into my office who understands what necromancy is and had a zombie cat as a child. Well, it was accidental. I didn't Accidental mean. or not, it uh, still happened, and that is not a, an indication of someone who is normal. Well, I wish I could be normal, so... <laughs> it's definitely not a point of pride for me, in any case. To be normal is a curse. Be exceptional instead. It's a motivational meme for you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Does he have those, like, meme posters on the wall? <laughs> oh my goodness, that'd be funny. <laughs> yeah, um, he says, well, uh, if you would like to explore these ideas further, and if you're not going to be in town for some time, maybe a crash course would do you well. Uh, seek me out. Um, you can come to this office. If I'm here, I will teach you what I can. Amazing. Crash <laughs> I do, I'm, uh, I am doing work for the garden at night. You were the gardener? So, I see. Yes. Then you have been Newly around so. our illustrious leader. Yes. In one way or another, I suppose. I would suggest it's learning funny. everything you can from observing him. Listen to what he says. My niche is, is plant life, so it's easy enough to get close and... I don't eavesdrop, mind you, but if he oh, speaks no. in a window... Eavesdropping would be unacceptable and a, a horrible practice, especially among the leader of the nation. But I can't help what I hear through an open window. Of course. How could you? Well, meet me well, here anytime you would like to learn more. Thank you. I will. I will leave you to your your uh, work. Um, thank you. And she will very awkwardly just kind of speed walk out. <laughs> All right. Sounds great. You head back outside. 
the days are days. Uh, but sometime in the middle, probably two to three days after that. Um, do I hear anything else from being in the garden? Or is it just the same, like... Yeah, so you do hear um, more of his musings, which I just steal from stick songs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, one, the one in particular stands out. It says, deep in my heart, a voice kept echoing. I knew I'd soon be wandering. Um, the other thing that you notice is that there's a, a fair amount of talk. He's just talking. It doesn't seem there's no response ever when he's talking, uh, but there's a fair amount of talking as if at someone, like he's arguing with someone who's not there. Um, and it's a lot of like I'm trying to think of how to characterize the conversation. A lot of it is like him um, trying to 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 be accepted by somebody or something again. Like he, it's like he's saying. Oh no! But look at the things I've done. Look at who who I've become. You know, I, please just accept me back. Don't reject me. That kind of of conversation. Um, that happens fairly often at night. Um, the other thing that you hear is uh, very quiet. Uh, it's you know you don't hear it often, but it's very quiet, and it's just sort of um, yeah. These are Tedros' conversations. Yeah, um, it's just sort of like. Uh, like he's like I, as if he's like I can't believe that she's making me do this. I can't believe that she's putting me in this position. I can't believe I've allowed myself to be controlled in this way. So, those are the major things that you hear from Tadriel. I'm writing. Sure, you're good. In this way. Okay, I'll hopefully be able to read that later. <laughs> um, uh, sometime, like, two to three days after talking to Nensis, I would like to, if I can, skip out on a night of the garden and go down. Probably, can I tell what the moon cycle is? Like, there's a lot of clouds, I know. It's but. pretty, yeah, it's pretty heavy clouds. Um, to, for what purpose? Just so I can... Uh, I'm trying to because one of the first things i heard him say was uh far beyond castle walls down by moonlit waterfalls i stood alone while the minstrel sang is so i'm trying to find moonlit waterfalls i don't know okay <laughs> <laughs> okay you look around uh make an investigation check this is at night yeah yeah okay obviously um you scour the city pretty well and you don't see any place that that could be um, you're, I mean, you go over pretty much every, every place in the city that is visible that you can, you know, that you can really find your way around. You spend a whole night just wandering and you don't see any place that is even like a lake or a pond or anything like that. Um, you do hear talk around town just throughout the course of your time there of Seton being both a port and having like waterfalls nearby along the cliff faces and everything like that as well as like a bunch of ponds and lakes that are kind of nearby so maybe that's where he's talking about but you don't see anywhere in town okay how much uh, how much of the night would be left uh i'd say you spend a good you got a pretty high investigation check i'd say you spend a good like five six hours looking so you've got a couple hours left okay could i make how far is season do i know Long way. Okay. Seton's like 30 miles. Let me check real quick. Is that the one that Zeline was going to? Or yeah. am I messing up? Okay. Yeah, that's the one she was going to. It's about 40 miles. 40 miles, okay. So unless you're real quick um, and like can teleport. <laughs> you can have a tough time <laughs> getting there and back. Yeah, okay. Uh, she'll probably do a little bit more in the garden. Okay. That night. Well, she'll go back and do, like, like early in the morning, and then probably just as the sun's starting to rise, get the hell out of there. <laughs> okay, all right, sounds good. Yeah. And the garden's looking great at this point. It's looking really lush and vibrant, really full of life. And you really turned it around and be in there. 
Uh, <laughs> and I suppose that's... Can I, at one point... Is there anywhere anywhere in the city that's, like, natural and, like, I know that it's, like, influenced by Tadriel, but, like, a park or something not next to the castle? Yeah, one of the things you find as you're exploring around is um, there is not. <laughs> it's just an oppressive cool. cityscape. Yeah, you go over pretty much everything, and it is just building after building after building after building. The garden being the only place that is has actual plant life. Um, in abundance there. You do, there. People have gardens on their rooftops and stuff like that, but there's no, like, grove or, like, um, you know, hidden place that you can get to. Okay. Very sad, I know. <laughs> <laughs> She'll just try to keep herself grounded and probably meditate a little bit on what Nensis said. Okay. And, yeah. All right. Sounds great. Um, next up, we will do Ezekiel. Hi. Um, first question is, do we want to... Uh, following up on the body that has to be buried. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to roleplay that, um, we can, yeah. Uh, not if it doesn't need to be. Uh, the one question I had related to it, though, is did we kind of decide where the graveyard that Ezekiel works is? Yeah. So like the, where it's located? Yeah, yeah. So the one that Ezekiel personally tends typically is right by the castle there's a graveyard right near the castle that is for mm. the scries but the one that this one is designated for is just outside the city so there's a gotcha. whole you know so that's the one where you got to take it out there this yeah. time but that takes them a little bit of time to go out there and dig the grave and do all that yeah uh so that's the first thing and then a couple of other things i wanted to do as the week went on was one to make a stop by the marketplace or something of that nature to pick up okay. lamp oil. <laughs> okay. Uh, just so he has a good reason to. Um, he will also, as he walks this time, be keeping an eye out for some of these mysterious newcomers that he's seen around. Okay. As he's kind of visiting the market, he is a very inquisitive person. So sure. he's just, he's just going to keep his eyes open for if he notices any of the people he's encountered. All right, let's make a perception check then as you get into the market. Okay, well, my perception is unfortunately a little bit low. Oh, that's not supposed to be an advantage. You're fine. Oh, I don't, have, yeah, I don't have the advantage trigger, that's why. Um, okay. I got it. I know how to, I know how to do it. Okay. <laughs> do you want me to... Uh... No, you're good. Um, that's fine. So I'd say, you know, because it's not like... You're not, like, rushing through or, or just getting one look around. It's, you can stand there and look as long as you want to, so... Advantage is, is perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, unless you're only looking one time, you know, and that's it. Um, but as you pass through, um, you do notice, you know, as you're just going about your daily tasks and kind of going about the city, you do notice there, there are some new people in town who are a little more flamboyant than the typical regular people that you see. Um, you know, there's that weird guard. There's, um, the, yeah, that really weird guard. Um, <laughs> you notice that there's a, a new elven guy working in the the uh, printing press. Um, there's a, a dragonborn blacksmith that you've already interacted with. Um, and there's a tiefling working in the bar. So you, you notice these people as you go about um, your your week. You know, your, your couple of weeks. Um, you don't see anybody in the marketplace in particular. Okay. Right now. But you're able to get the lamp oil, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. However much you want to buy uh, is fine. Oh, uh, okay. Enough that he has it. It's practical, too, because I do not have dark vision. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, then the only other thing that I wanted to do... Well, maybe a little bit of both. Uh, as he's walking around... I want to pass by the necropolis. Maybe not go in, but I want to check on events and things that are happening there. Okay. What types of things are you looking for? Like just... a... It's more of just like a general thing at this point, since he's worked with them at some points, just seeing if there's anything they need from him or that kind of sort of thing. Okay. Not really as an inquisitive thing at this necessarily at this point, unless he notices anything out of the ordinary. Okay. Um, so just like kind of a normal check-in at this point. Yeah, okay. 
So you go in and uh, the, the person that you have been working with for a few weeks now is named Samara. She's an older half-elven woman, um, very severe, very serious, um, very driven person. But um, as you, um, let me move this to somewhere that's not, how much can I get of whatever? Um, okay, so you head into this, um, this area inside the necropolis and um, Samara, you know where her office is. So it wouldn't be unusual for you to go and just stop by and see if there's anything they need you to do. Um, as you come around the corner, you you overhear them, her talking with two other people. It seems like her aides, second and third in command maybe, or something like that. Um, can't really make out their, their conversation aside from that um, they're talking about a trip that's coming up that Samara's going to have to take. Um, she's... You don't really hear where, but you do hear, um, yes, in two weeks we'll travel there, and uh, I will go without you two as escort. You'll be in charge while I'm gone. Please take care of things. Don't screw it up. And then this is what that's when you approach. Uh, good day, Samara. Ezekiel? I, uh, I took care of the body. We, like we discussed. Thank you. Is there anything else that needs to be done? Bodies to be picked up, that sort of thing? Uh, well, you know the the weeding is coming up at the end of the week. Ah, so yes, of course. The selection has not been made yet, but uh, once it is, I expect that you'll prepare the grounds like normal. Of course, yes. My thanks. Aside from that, no, there's nothing. The city has always appreciates your service. And Ezekiel will awkwardly stand there for enough for there to be an awkward silence and pause. Okay. She kind um, of looks at you like, uh, all right. <laughs> Samara, I was just, you know, thinking about things and wondering. What do you do? do to the bodies before I get there. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> you can't. See if you can cash in on your relationship. Uh, probably, the call probably is not. <laughs> oh, I'm also GM rolling for some reason. Anyway, I'll figure this all out. <laughs> I rolled an 8 for everyone else. <laughs> she kind of looks you up and down and says, well, I suppose you've worked in the city long enough to know. When we go to them, we treat them with mint and anise and peppermint and all these things to make them smell good. So that way, when you have to bury them, they don't smell like dead bodies. I see that makes sense, yes, of course. I guess, suppose. Nothing to concern yourself with. Uh, just make sure that if you no, see no. any of the markings that we place on them, do not disturb them. Uh, of course not. That I'm... Yes. Well, well I, I should be going now. You should. Cool. And then he will leave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, last thing for sometime this week. Is there any way that he could track down Inara? Not, well, Inara, whatever yeah. he thinks her name is. Yeah, Inara. yeah. Uh, he thinks I can't remember. Beryl. Beryl, yeah. Beryl, I have it written down. Somewhere. Yeah, uh, easy enough to do. I mean, you all you, you work right next to each other in the evenings especially, so easy peasy to, to track her down and find her. Okay. And I know she's at the gardens. I should just yeah. go to the gardens at night. <laughs> I will go to the garden at night and try okay. and find... <laughs> that that makes more sense. All right, sounds good. That would make sense. Yes. <laughs> um, and then to start with, I think he approaches stealthily, but not because he's trying to sneak up, just because that's how he walks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I can still roll a stealth check if you want. Sure. Yeah. Oh wait, how do I not GM roll on this? In the settings, the little gear, there's an option that's like roll to GM. Always whisper like, rolls. There it is. Never whisper yeah. rolls. There Always we go. Whisper. I definitely whisper reset my roll 20 twice because I thought I wasn't seeing your go. rolls. 
Seven. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You guys see that one at least? Yeah. It's okay. good. Okay. Yeah. So you're moving through just as your normal self, but uh, and Ira, I don't believe your passive perception is high enough to notice that. Um, eighteen. Yeah. So you don't notice him approaching. Um. Hello. For the love of. Uh, oh. And yes, Devin, plus twelve to stealth. <laughs> Oh, hi, Ezekiel. <clears throat> you Sorry, scared me there. Didn't mean to start <laughs> on you. Um, it's fine. How goes the garden, Ignia? Well, I like to think I've done some good work with it. Um, ah. It was in questionable shape when I got here, but... Well, yes, it looks quite nice now. Thank you. That's only partially because of me. These plants are resilient. Yes, well, how do I put this? What exactly are you doing here? What do you mean? I'm tending the garden and making a new life for myself. When we first met, you told me that you were seeking work here in Harverstead, but no one comes seeking work in Harverstead. Have you seen the conditions here? Well, I suppose no one but me is dumb enough to try and seek work here, but I'm not the smartest. Mm, no one but you, hmm? That's strange. I've met two others that came seeking work, too. But I suppose really? you're right. Yes, indeed. Seems a no, lot I've of never... people seeking work these days. Oh, well, that's just the, these times, you know? Maybe in Harvest Eve itself, but I've not heard of that in other places. Have you ever been to Falderstep? I've, I rarely leave the city. Well, there you go. Falderstep is just as many people, if not more, actively looking for work. Hmm. Latium, too. Several people settle in Latium to be merchants. Because what else are they going to do? I see. Well, this garden, nothing was growing here before, no matter how hard I tried. But you seem to have made quite the place of it. It's quite the impressive feat. Well, I, I was born in a forest, so I tend to have more capable abilities with a garden than some. Are you insinuating something? No, no, of course not. <laughs> okay, then. Cool. <laughs> Good to know. Well, that's what he she's, says. <laughs> she's, just, she's just awkwardly, like, kneeling there next to a plant, just, like, looking at you. Mm. Prolonged eye contact. Yes, yeah, very awkward. Well, if you have no reason to sneak up on me, then I shall get back to it, unless... No, no, of course, you can get back to your work now. I just can't keep you long. Very well. And she will get up and, like, cross the garden away from Ezekiel. <laughs> like, even if she's not done fully tending that plant, she just gets up and, like, walks to, like, the other side. Okay. All right. Uh, Ezekiel, anything else? Nope. Okay. There may be things that happen during the week that I'll, I'll bring you in for. That's fine, yeah. Happen, so, okay. Cool. All right. Um, so, next up is Boris. That's me. Boris. <laughs> so, <laughs> cracks me up, sorry. Boris Bolivian. <laughs> Boris. <laughs> so, what would you like to do? Um, well, the first thing is his plan for propaganda posters this week. Yes. Um, is that he's going to not do subliminal hope messages anymore. He just wants to straight up do like, keep hope, you know, stay strong. People of Haversteep, you know, stuff like that. 
Okay. Uh, no more subliminal, just all the way out of it. Uh, making sure to sign them with uh, Captain Burt Reynolds Esquire. Okay. Uh, but then he wants to do one um, that is going to be like inspired by the stuff that Tillip showed me uh, the previous week, the okay. posters that she had. Yeah. Um, that's, I, I don't remember exactly what those were, but kind of more like resistancy yeah, type yeah, thing. Yeah. And just sign it with a V in the bottom. Okay. Um, hopefully do that like stealthily so his coworkers don't see. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so make a make a stealth check and make a, either performance or like painter's kit check, whichever yeah. one. Okay, so stealth. <laughs> um, <laughs> what what ability score for the painter's supplies? Uh, I would say since you're trying to just make good art, I would say that's just dexterity. Okay. Dexterity. Nice twenty four. <clears throat> the posters turn out great. Um, I mean, they are they are so good. They're so good. You're oh, sorry. I got to change the thing here. I'll put you in a tavern because that's the best I've got. Um, but the uh, the posters turn out so good that you keep finding yourself just picking them up and looking at them and like leaning over. Hey, check this one out. Doesn't this look great? Um, very obvious to the people you work with. Um, but Tillip repeatedly comes over and just tells everyone, No! No! Go back to work! Don't worry about what he's doing! Don't worry about anyone else! Just do your own work! So, you don't know how much uh, came across to everyone else, but... You made a bunch of very... They look very good. They're very, like, convincing. They're very, very well-made posters. Okay. Um... And then the other thing that he would like to do as maybe kind of part of that is he wants to try and befriend one of his co-workers, one of the other people that's making the posters, uh, okay. with the eventual end goal of, like, finding out how they feel about living here. Okay. All right. So the guy who works closest to you, um, you've learned just through being there, his name is Char. <clears throat> Char. Yeah. Char. Um, he, he's a younger guy. He looks like uh, looks like you know if he lived in another city, he might be like a farmer or something like that. Um, kind of a bigger bigger guy, but not like um, I don't know Drenaira. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, at, at this point, he looks a little emaciated, a little like he's lived here a long time and doesn't see a lot of sun, doesn't eat very well, those kinds of things. Um, but he's very focused in his work. He seems like he he just you know once he gets in the zone, he just got this laser focus um but you, you've learned uh you know who he is kind of his name and everything just through being nearby each other and working near each other uh, but yeah you, you can approach him during one of these days no problem yeah so maybe towards the end of like our shift yeah i'll just approach him and say um hi cha i'm but i work right over there yes but it's a it's nice to, to see you again uh, so you do Pretty weird work, if I'm honest. <laughs> well, I'm from out of town, you know. It's it's my style, if if you will. Those out of towners. <laughs> yes. So? Well, uh, this out of towner would like to offer to take you to dinner um, for a drink, even. I I know a great place called the Tipsy Salmon. Um, well, let's start with be drinks all on me. before we sure. jump to dinner. That's a little forward of you, but... Uh... <laughs> Please. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> Unless... The tipsy salmon. Why really be um... taking everybody in this place out? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's kind of like a like a dive bar. Like, if I yeah. know a guy who got stabbed there last week. Well, I haven't had that experience yet, and I'll tell you what. There's a... Just between you and me, there's a guy who works there. Mwah. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Uh, well, that's cool for you. Uh, but sure, we can we can grab a drink. I mean, if there's another place that you know that's better, I could take you there as well, as long as it's not, you know, too expensive. Wherever you would like to go, you're paying. <laughs> The tipsy salmon it is, then. 
So you, the two of you head out that way. It's it's really close by. It seems like that's mainly the reason that he agreed to go with you there. It's like it's right there. Um, yeah. But the two of you go in, and it's busier than you've seen it before. Um, there's actually a fair amount of people in there. Uh, pretty rough crowd, like usual, but um, you do see um, Zarius in there as well, kind of hurriedly checking tables and running drinks and that kind of thing. Um, you no, see no, it. Put, put, put that down. <laughs> you see a bar fight get broken up at one point. Um, but uh, the two of you find a table. Easy enough. Um, I have to be honest. The other reason I like to come here, I'm lucky that it was happening tonight, is I like to watch all of the action that happens, all of the fun stuff, you know, like that over there. That I can get behind. You know, there are people <laughs> who run betting pools for that sort of thing. Oh? You are you just, interested then? You may just know and someone. I'll, I, I'll pull out a gold piece and just set it on the table. All right, who's your money on? The fat guy or the, uh, well, the other one? <laughs> I'm gonna go with the other one, underdog. You've got it. He slams a gold piece down on the table and the two of you sit back and watch. Um, and they're, I mean, they're they are doing that knife game where they like stab around their fingers, you know? Um, <laughs> the heavier guy, um, at one point just spits beer in the other guy's face while he's going and he slams it down on his finger and just pulls back and slugs him, you know, finger still bleeding all over and the fight breaks out. Um, we'll roll to see who wins it. Um, yeah, the other guy ends up, um, just like, you know, he ends up getting the knife and he's about to plug him with it and, uh, Den calls Zarius to intervene. Zarius will go over and just like catch his hand right before and be like, now, now, if we're going to play dirty, take it outside. I have to clean this up. <laughs> Two of them kind of like simmered down. They see uh, Zarius. They look over at Den and they're like, all right, all right, we'll take it out. Um, <laughs> and they start to leave and the guy um, t- stops and turns around, grabs his finger off the desk or off the table and takes it with him out. <laughs> Char says, well, turns out you were right. You've got a good eye for this sort of thing. He slides the slides the gold I, over to him. I, could, I can add one whole gold to my inventory. Sorry. Nice. Um, I would say I rather just got lucky. I don't have the greatest eyes, except for art, you know. But that's me, though. I'm an artist. Um, what are you live here? Have you always lived here? I've lived here. Yeah, pretty much my whole life. Um, since I was a child, at least. I don't remember living anywhere else. Um, but to remember more, I might need another drink. And he gestures over <laughs> towards the bar. Yeah. I'll, I'll pay up for that one as well. Okay. Yes, right on it. He says, yes, I've lived here for as long as I can remember. Uh, my parents lived here. And presumably their parents and so on. But I never knew them. That's impressive. The whole line of Halasleepians. I can never stay in one place for that long, but um, do you like it here? I noticed that, I mean, you know, this sort of stuff happens all day, but this is just here, though. Do you like it in Halasleep? I think that if we are to only do things that we like, we'll never get anything done. Sometimes you just have to live somewhere. Hmm. It's quite a profound way of putting it. It's less profound and more just a way to get through the day. So, days are hard, then. You don't like it here. The days are hard, the weeks are harder, the months are even harder than that. Sorry to hear that. You live here too now. (laughs) You'll see. Yeah. Well... That's why I make the posters that I do. I try to stay strong and give that strength to other people. I've seen your work. Are you not afraid of the scries? The what? The scries, the inquisitors. I mean, I've heard a little bit about them. Should I, should I be afraid of them? Yeah, they uh, tend to round up people who show anti-Haversteep sentiment. 
and execute oh. them publicly. Well, stay tuned for mine. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you saw the way of suffering at the entrance of the city. Hmm. That is that where my parents bad. went. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. It wasn't even their fault. Half the time, people are chosen simply because they are chosen. There seems no reason or rhyme behind it. Simply to keep us in fear. Well, hopefully I can get out of here before I <laughs> realize that. Hopefully. And get... The work you do, I... I agree with you, but it is foolhardy. You're throwing your life away for no reason. I'm an elf. I've lived a life, more life than a lot of people ever will. So if I can do something good with the last bit of it, I'll have lived a successful one. What good? See someone die and Lose your life for no reason, nothing will change, nothing will will come of it. Just end up another body on the way of suffering. When instead you could live, you could escape from here, maybe? You could go along and continue living, continue surviving. Isn't that better? Is that what you'd like to do? Escape? That's what I've been doing. Just getting by. If I could no, get out, I mean... it's a tempting prospect. Although I suppose, well, maybe you don't know actually, since you didn't know about the scries. Uh, prior to the weeding, and until the selection is made, the city is on lockdown for four days, five days before. So there's no escape today, at least, even if we wanted to. Oh, does that mean someone's getting selected soon? The weeding happens every three weeks, like clockwork. Hmm. All right. And if we both live to see next week, let's say a traveler helps you get out, start a new life somewhere else. I don't deal in dreams, friend. Well, maybe we can chat next week then and deal in actualities. Perhaps. I'd like to see a smile on your face, a real one, not just one put there to try and get by. You deserve it. You're pretty weird, but you're paying for the drinks, so I appreciate that. Well... I live life to make people happier. That's why I'm an artist, and if that includes you, I've done my job. Well, I know Tillip likes you. You should watch out for her. I heard she's got a mean case of uh, rash down, down there. Just be careful. Don't know if it's true, but just be careful. <laughs> Thank you for the advice, Charles. You have a family help. waiting for you back home that you should get to? It takes kind of a long moment and looks up and says, no. Hmm. Well then, I'm happy that I could treat you to something, some form of companionship tonight. Thank you, it's been good to laugh at that guy losing his finger. <laughs> what an idiot. What an idiot. I think I'm going to stay here for a little bit longer, but don't let me keep you, and um, I want you to have this, and I'll take out a platinum piece and just slide it over the table towards him. His eyes kind of get big for a second, and he picks it up. Are you serious? Why? I also don't deal in... I also don't deal in dreams. I meant what I said. Thank you. 
takes it, puts it in his pocket. He gets up to leave, and he kind of looks at you again. It's just like a... There's that glimmer of hope there that's just... Like, he's not ready to accept it just yet. He looks at you and, and steps out towards the door, opens the door, and turns one more time to just kind of... And then exits. All right. Then I'll call Zarius over. Hey, bartender man, another <laughs> another one of those, please. Yes, of course. And whenever Zarius comes to drop it off, just <laughs> how you doing? How you been? Oh, well, hanging in there. Had an interesting conversation with Kana at the end of last week. Oh, something about um, a message sent her. I'm sure she'll get in touch with you. Well. Do you have time to chat, or are you on the clock? Ah, for you, always. <laughs> I, um, made a friend at my place of work who told me of a similar thing, that magical communications out or into the city are intercepted, but between people in the city, it's all right. It's safe. It's not touched. Well. And that same friend is wanting to change things around here. It would seem we've made a couple of friends of the like. Um, you might stop by our guard friend and there's a scholar you might want to be introduced to. Yeah, I'll do that. I have some problems with people at the press anyways. <laughs> I'll tell our guard friend about them. Maybe she can rough them up a little bit. Oh, I've heard she's quite good. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I'll get to see it for myself then, but... <laughs> that was all I had to say. So, uh, hang in I don't there. want to keep you for too long, but... Yes, it is quite busy. <laughs> Much to clean. <laughs> Always is. Best wishes, friend. We'll see yes. you soon. See you soon. No, get up and head out. By the way, the, the bill for what Char drank is like <laughs> 12 gold. Okay. So, Jeez. Jeez. he's definitely Happily. getting the top shelf stuff while he's sitting there. <laughs> Mans can drink. Far says no problem paying that. <laughs> So. so yeah, and then I'll just head back and um, probably then the next day go and find Kanan if he okay. can. Yeah, yeah, easy enough. Um, Tillip actually will will send you out. He sends somebody out each day on to put up posters. So okay. today's your day. Um, you get to put them out around, but you can easily just make your way towards the the front gate where you know Kanan works. Okay. Um. um th th would I would I have done the one that that one special poster that I wanted to make by this point? You have that one still. So they just gave you the stack that everybody's made for the week. So you've got you know a whole your own ones that you've made as well as everybody else's. Okay. So you can choose however you want to put them up. So whatever ones you want to have, that's the ones you've got. Um, yeah. But as you um, at this time, just so Canon, you know, um, you're stuck on trash patrol, so you're out picking up. You know, garbage and that kind of stuff around the front entrance area and the surrounding blocks. So, just so you know what you're up to, um, full armor out in the uh, in the street. <laughs> Sounds about right. I couldn't hit someone that was standing still. So yeah. So, um, but yeah, you see Varus out putting up posters, um, nailing them to to walls and doors and whatever else. Um, And I'll like, uh, as I'm moving to the next one, if I see Kanan, I'll just kind of wave. Uh, Kanan will walk close to you, uh, see some trash over there, and be and like lead down to grab it and be like, uh, "Can I help you?" Then I'll turn to the nearest wall and start to put up a poster, and uh, respond. I made a friend at the printing press. Her name is Tilla. She supports our cause. Might be helpful to check in. 
Oh, that that's good. Um, met someone named Nensis. Works at the um, works at the academy. The necropolis. Um, <laughs> and um, gave us something to do in a little less than three weeks. Should I ask him for more details, or should I wait for those three weeks and meet up with you all at that point? I think he would appreciate meeting someone else who is of the same mind. I will do my best to find him then. All right. Um, but Zarius has the the key. Uh, it's this message place. He wants us to destroy all of the messages in there. I think we can do that. That sounds like fun. It's been a while since I did anything exciting. <laughs> Not that right. this isn't exciting. Oh, but uh, I didn't even think to run to you. I, I, are you... You're at the printing press? Indeed. Okay. <laughs> um, don't send messages. Oh, I got the word. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, as long as you know. Yeah. I am on top of it, though. Perfect. Well... There's not anything else. I see some trash across the street that's got my name on it. <laughs> Good luck with your trash patrols, officer. Good day. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> and then the only other thing I want to do this week um, is the the one special poster that I made. I want it to go in like the market okay. if I can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, make a sleight of hand check. Or stealth, just to see how you know how casual you can be about putting this up. Ten, <laughs> pretty middling, yeah. You get there, and uh, it's not too busy. Fortunately, it's not like empty, but uh, people seem more interested in just the rain is kind of heavy today. People seem more interested in just getting their stuff and going home. Um, so you do find a nice clear spot. You do have to move a poster over to the side, but you find a spot that you can clear out and stick it up there. Um, a few people kind of look at you funny, and they definitely. Record, like they they remember your face, they give you that look of like oh. I'm trying to remember who this person is, um, but mm -hmm. not anyone that you can you know, just seems like random people. So, okay, sure. But yeah, you managed to get that done. Anything else you'd like to do? Uh, no, that's it for this week. I'll go and talk to Nensis next week. Okay, or whenever. Well, yeah, because this is the last. This is the third week. So, if you want to do it. Now's the time. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. The, then, yeah, towards the end of the week, okay. Um, I guess I'll head to the necropolis and okay. see if I can find him uh, without asking anyone. But if it takes me too long, I'll just ask someone, hey, where's Nansen's? Okay. Make, a, uh, make an investigation check. I interject real quick, Matt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there is there a certain market dweller that notices this poster going? Oh yeah, up? sorry, I didn't know that anyone else was gonna go. <laughs> yeah, so I would say yeah, Ezekiel, you definitely notice this elven guy okay. putting up a poster. That's all I want to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I won't so. follow up on it, but it's okay. good to good to know. Yeah, um, yeah. You look around, Varus, and you cannot find this guy. Uh, you even ask a few people, and they're like, "I don't, I don't know him or you. What are you talking about?" So you're unable to find Nensis. Okay, Sorry. then he'll just Only head two. back, and that's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, sounds great. Next up is Harriet. That's me. What did I even want to do? Da, 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 da. Just nothing, just work. Yeah. Just chilling, making holy armor, you know what I mean? It'd be like that. Um. Well, what she does want to do is... At near the beginning of the week, visit this mysterious third drawer in the desk and ah, try okay. and get some. We can, yeah, I mean, talk about what that pricing would look like, but try and get um, her two last items for crafting ammunition. Okay. It's definitely at the beginning of the week thing because of that wait time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so, we'll say, um, yeah, the beginning of the week, you make your way there. Um, how much do you think it's worth? 
I've got to think about it because. Okay. You can make an intelligence check, and I can give you an estimate if you if you would like. Sure, because the way it is with like gunslingers, you make it at half the cost, and yeah. then it's part of it, and she's making it still. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how math works with that. But okay, you said intelligence. Yeah. Sixteen, pretty good. Um, you would just guess. You make a pretty good guess over like what the components could cost, how common they are, based on you know your what you've seen, um, and you get the sense that if you put in. 250 gold, that would be enough to get you the components you need to make a good amount of ammunition. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that works. Check. That works for her. So that's the first part of her mission is okay. getting that ready to go. Get that all together and you take it down and put it in the in the drawer? Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, it's easy enough to do. Um, nobody's paying attention. Nobody really looks twice. Um, everyone seems to be in their own business. It's like walking around Seattle. So. <laughs> She's like, well, um, thinking to herself, like, well, I hope this works. I don't know. <laughs> if not, I guess I'm down some gold. But. <laughs> okay. Kind of puts that away. Um, at some point, she'd like to. I'm assuming they've been doing this throughout the week, but just actually talking one-on-one -on -one would like to invite um, main man George to tea in the evening or yeah. something. Yeah, which I just presume she would have been doing each night, but just... Sure. Yeah, for the sake of... <laughs> yeah, most of the time he declines. Um, most of the yeah. time he'll, he'll stick to himself. But um, this time he's like, yeah, you know what? It'd be... I think it'd be good. We, we can we can have some tea. I think it'd be good. Yeah, be good. So, so do, you just, you uh, have... do you just drink it or... Is there, like, a thing you have to do with it? <laughs> well, have you never had tea before? I mean, it, I mean, it, no, actually. No, I haven't. <laughs> well, that's all right. Everyone does it a little differently. For me, I mean, you're just drinking something, sure. But it, it's part of that process of making it. It's really calming, you know? And um, I don't know. I always live by what an old friend of mine said, where when you're making tea and you pour it out of, you know, the kettle, which I have right here, you always pour your intentions for the day or for the evening into that cup, you know? I just find it very nice. But, um, yeah, other than that, it's pretty easy. You know, in comparison with everything, you're fine with flame, obviously, so that's the only issue. <laughs> oh, so it's kind of like how I, I pour my desire to kill my enemies into the swords, right? That's kind of what you're... Absolutely, yeah. George. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah, this is just part of that process, you know? It's just time to think of, reflect a little bit. That's what I like to do with it in the morning and the evening and a lot in the middle of the day. I drink a lot of tea, but... <laughs> so what do you reflect on, Her uh, not Harriet? <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Corinne? <laughs> um, you know... It depends on the day, of course. Sometimes it's just, like you said, it's just daily work. You know, oh, I need. To, how do I do that better? Um, or I reflect on, um, well, a long time ago, I, I lost my husband. You see, and so I, I think about him sometimes, or other loved ones, and I like to think about um, how they would feel about what I'm doing. You know, would they? How would they respond to it? Help me stay grounded in it, you know? So. But you can think about whatever you want. And, the tea and is you don't kind have to of, tell me. The tea is kind of like your, your focusing point. Is that right? Sure, you could call it that. You know, you center yourself on it. Well, it's a, it's a little embarrassing, but I guess I, I do kind of do the same thing. Um, but I, I use something else. Um, uh, one, one moment. And he rushes up the stairs, and you hear his door close and open, or open and then close. And he comes back down the stairs, and he presents this small figurine that he's made. Mm -hmm. He says, "See, this is uh, well. This is my guardian angel. This oh, well, this isn't is, my guardian angel. Wait, is this the same one that I've seen before? Yeah. The the yeah. red? Okay. Um, he's like, well, this this isn't my guardian angel, but this is a this is what a representation, right? right. Yes." Okay. Uh, and you see, I, I've made it, and he gets really like 
super dorky about it. And he's like, look, I've made it so the arms move and the wrists can rotate and like the fingers all can articulate. Like this is a really, it's a really intricate, impressive thing that this guy's made. Um, he says, look, you can, you can pull off the helmet and you can take off the armor. And as he takes off the helmet, you see it's a, it's a woman's face. Um, and you recognize this woman. Uh, it's a polydex. What? <laughs> um. Do you? Hold on. Sorry. Um. Is that? Is this a religious figure? I don't. Wouldn't call. It's a religious figure. I mean, she protects me. If anyone asks, this is Tadriel. Of course. Because you know he's the real angel here. Um, of course. But uh, no, um, she she protects me. She she looks out for me. She makes sure that I don't get selected for the meeting. Um, she and seems seems to be quite the guardian. She's very powerful, uh, but she's also very kind. She's very good, most of all. She seems to um, have a lot of different traits, perhaps. When I. Yeah. When I see her, I see her sometimes in my dreams. And when I do, she's always just radiates goodness. She comforts me and there's nothing, nothing quite like it. And no malice in her. Well, um, do you, sorry if this is too personal, do you communicate with her through this or is it just a reminder of her? presence or you channel her in some way like you said this is just so that i can be reminded of of mm. doing the good that she suggests um, can i like insight check him on yeah. arcane focus things sure oh yeah 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 go ahead because obviously she knows what would that be like intelligence or <laughs> um i would say well are you trying to see if it's an arcane focus or are you trying to see his intentions Mm, I think she cares more about the intentions. Okay, yeah. so that'd be insight. Sorry, yes. Sorry. Sorry, yes. <laughs> 19, okay. Cool. Um, you get a, a pretty good read on this guy. You've been working with him for some time. Um, it's just the two of you, so you, you get a pretty good handle on him. Uh, it doesn't seem like he's up to anything or that he, he uses mm -hmm. it for anything other than literally just a reminder to do you know, it's like those uh, those WWJD bracelets that people used to wear. It's that kind of yeah. thing for him. You know, it's like he just has that around so that he can remember. But he obviously has to keep it hidden because, you know, the whole tabular yeah. thing. So. Uh, Harriet's going to think about her playing her cards for a second. <laughs> and then go, um, you know, before I was here, as you know, I'm pretty new. Um, so I've seen some other beings before I was, of course, introduced to the gloriousness of Tadriel and all that. Um, I think I've seen um, this kind woman before, I think. And I'm glad you, um, you've connected with her. You've, you've seen her? Like in, in not, how are you have eyes? Oh, no, not like that. <laughs> of course not. Even in my but dreams, I've, she's bright. I've never seen her. Um, but I, I mean, I've seen a, a friend of mine from who uh, talks about her in the same way as you do. I've seen her light, if you will, through him, you know. Oh. She has told me that there are others, but I, I can't leave here to go find them. And I'm not strong enough to stand against Hadriel myself, so... I just make armor. You, you can know, see he feels a little just like, like disappointed in himself that he can't do more. George, do you, you know, we're drinking tea tonight, but perhaps another night we could go, you know, the tipsy salmon. I've been there a couple times now. I know a bit, a bit of a place. It's a dreadful place, but yes, I know it. But Light can be found in some of the most interesting of places, if you know what I mean, George. 
I think I do. So perhaps together we could, or on your own we could talk about it, but I think it might be worth a visit. That's all. Okay. Yes, we can do that. Just think about it. And she just downs the entire cup of tea. Yes, I, I, I would like that. Well, all right. I don't know what day in the week it is. I've lost track. <laughs> but... <It's okay. laughs> uh, we'll say that you can go... Um, you can go later this week. A day or two later. It's no problem. Okay, then that would be her next okay. thing that she would do. All right, so yeah, after work one day, the two of you head over to the Tipsy Salmon. George, of course, leaving that, um, yes. <laughs> of course, leaving that, uh, that thing at the, uh, at, in his room. Um, but the two of you head over there, um, and enter in. And it's, a, you know, it's, it's a fairly busy night. Um, uh, I would say, yeah, it's probably the same night that, uh, Varus and Char are in there. Um, so it's, it's fairly busy, um. There's a lot going down. Yeah, there's a lot happening. Um, but uh, we'll say that you two are getting there nearing the time when uh, Varus would be getting ready to leave. So okay. you're there at the same time for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, just so we can logistically do this. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, the two of you enter in, and it's a pretty, you know, seedy, gross place, as, as is usual. Um, but uh, you all find a table, no problem. And uh, Zarius can come over and give you guys drinks if he wants to. I was gonna avoid them like the plate. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. He'll swing by. Oh, um, hello. Is there anything I can get you to? Um, you know. <laughs> Sorry, looks so bad. Um, <laughs> my, what? I don't. What do you drink, George? Uh, I usually go with beer. <laughs> it's nice and easy. Your best beer. Um, uh, <laughs> that's all, I guess, for now. <laughs> right on, for both of you, just for the one. Oh, I guess I'll have one too. Um, do you serve drinks here in glasses, or do you serve them in vases, or what does that look like? Fine. Let's get back to the um usually in glasses okay little mugs if you will <laughs> um sorry why, have, have you i think i've had something to drink i think i was pre-gaming i'm sorry <laughs> right well i'll go grab the beers right do that <laughs> Be like, oh, no, After Sirius leaves, uh, George is just like, "Why is that guy so weird? It's, what's going on? <laughs> Do you oh, like know him or something?" Or yeah, uh, this is George. I don't know. I'm not good at this. This is the person I was talking about. Oh, well, why didn't you just say that? I uh, I don't. I'm not good at just saying things, George. All the time. I'm just bad at being direct. <laughs> well, uh, we can just thing. invite him to sit down if you if you would like. That would be. You know what, George? <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! You know what, Georg? Uh... <laughs> Spiders, Georg. That sounds like a great idea. All right. Guess we just wait. <laughs> Serious, will tell the guy to take his finger with him and then come back. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, well, um, here are your beers and no, sorry. mugs. Sorry. Tiny mugs, yes. Um, what did you say your name was? Fred? Frank. Frank, right. Sorry. <laughs> Frank, um... <laughs> Oh my word. Is, is it Fred? Wait. It was definitely Fred earlier, but I think Abigail is still saying Frank, so I think you're Okay, good. I was like, I must have been wrong. That was my issue. Oh no. Um, okay, Fred, to be frank. Um, <laughs> sorry, I think 
there's a lot of nervous tension going on. I was wondering if you would want to sit down and talk with us for a second. Um, this is my friend George. I know we've met a couple times, even though I keep messing up your name, apparently. But I, I work with George here, and it seems like um, you two might have, uh, well, something in common you might want to talk about. Oh? Something in common? Um, you know, a similar... You know, when you see someone with pointed ears, and you're like, well, that is one fiery bitch of an elf. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Um... Like that. Okay. Zarius, do you, I don't remember, do you have like a spiritual um, focus? I don't remember what you have. Yeah, I don't even know. Um, not really, no. Okay, well, um, He's got like handprints on his shoulders, but <laughs> if yeah, you she'll, wanted she'll to be go... like, you know, like <laughs> someone grabs uh, your shoulder oh. really firmly. Okay, and yeah, getting the vase. Get, mm, gotcha. Uh, she's like, please help oh. me. <laughs> oh, okay, George. Um, you follow the the mistress, the lady. The mistress. Uh, I don't know. I know that <laughs> she protects me. She acts as my guardian angel, and she tells me to do good things sometimes, and to look out for other people, and those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, it's good to meet someone who walks the same path. I, I, she had told me that there were others, but I had never met one. It's, it's amazing. You were one of the first that I've met as well. Uh, you, well, what do you do? Why, why are you working at this bar? Are you? Oh, you know, do a little bit of everything. Um, done quite a bit of traveling and recently have wound up here and needed a place to work. Oh, that's that's exciting. Uh, well, um, uh, do you have, uh, I don't know, other other skills? I mean, maybe maybe she brought you here for a reason, brought us together now for, for a reason? Oh, um, maybe. Like I said, I've done quite a lot of everything here and there. Um, There's prob almost definitely a reason we're here. But, you know, it's really it's up for time to tell what that reason could be. Really vague. Um, to be. Yeah, well, you know, it's. To be direct, I've got a supply of weapons and armor in my basement. A lot? <laughs> well, um, I am quite well versed in using both weapons and armor. Um. <laughs> okay, maybe that's why to you're be... here. Yeah, yeah, I just, you know, you can't really say these things to sure. most people. Yes. Um, so, just trying to be a bit vague. Under um, understand. Uh, he takes a look around the bar at just like the drunk people and people who are, you know, just arguing, whatever. He's like, I think that we can say anything in here and no one is going to remember. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, it's a good least. point. I really wish I wouldn't remember this. Well, um, that's very good. Uh, maybe you're here to displace the tyrant. Definitely believe, um, maybe in the cards. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, just know that uh, when you do, there are people willing to help, and I have supplies for them. So you can send anyone by and. Uh, I suppose we should have a passcode or something. Um, Bananarama, perhaps? Uh, I love it. Hold, hold on. No, no, I love Where, it. Hold on. Hold that, on. That's the one. But nobody's coming in to say that. It doesn't sound normal. Well, that's kind of the point, right? That... Yeah, I mean, but, we wouldn't accidentally have... But if have someone else a... is listening, and I'd like to order a Bananarama... We could have, like, smoothies my or something. Armor. And maybe then give those to them. As maybe well. we can put specials up on the board and say the banana rama special and. The... But then it, it's even more obvious. Then someone else That's will true. order it on accident. That's true. That is it's a good point. Well, what do you suggest? Well, do you... 
took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> um, well, you know, George and I have been working on a certain project together, um, involving armor as well. Um, I, it's, I don't know, we could use the word holy or something. Clever. Like, that uh. makes more sense, someone coming in, asking about holy things. <laughs> Very good. Yes, so anyone coming in and says anything holy, uh, we can provide them with weapons and, and armor. and uh, Or they can just come by when the time comes and be fitted that way. But I also have supplies that can be brought in. Um, so, good to know that you are a fellow follower. It's good to, uh, it's good to it's finally good meet to one. Make friends, of, especially with a task such as ours, friends are needed. Well, uh, well I, it's enough putting myself in danger for tonight. I I'm Yeah, sure. I've got puke to clean up and people to remove. Gross. Yeah, it's not great. Don't know how people do this for a living. <laughs> well, goodbye. Oh, bye. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he'll stop by... Uh, I forgot Boris's name, so Varus. Bert? Uh, Bert. Yeah, Bert Reynolds. I should remember that one out of all of them. Um, he'll stop by Bert's table um, and be like, um, I remember when we were talking about friends earlier. Yeah? There's one sitting over there if you'd like to introduce yourself. Or if not, you can stay over here. Anyways, I've got to get back to work. I'll, I'll just kind of like wander off. W wave over in the direction of Harriet and George. Yeah, he is his back to you, so he can't see you. Okay. I'll just, like, wave at Harriet and kind of, like, raise an eyebrow. Is George, like, actively leaving the bar right now? No, he's, like, gathering his, his stuff up. Like, you know, he seems like he's getting ready to get up and go. Um, don't have to talk long. If you want, I can introduce you to one more person quickly, just to recognize a face. Sure, yes. Kind of. Um... But right. I'll um, stand up and walk over. Just kind of stand next to the table. Hi. Um, this is my co-worker, well, my boss, uh, George. Ah, he make, George. Uh, he makes some great armor and some great things like that. Um, this is our friend Bert. I believe he works making some of the posters. There's one in the market right now, oh, especially, yes. right? I've seen your work around town. It's very good. Oh. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so I think we're both just a fan of the messages in your work, Bert. Yes. That's all. I do what I can, you know. But um, have a good night. Yep, man. You as well. Good night, George. It was nice to meet you, George. Goodbye. I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, George. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, Harry, anything else you'd like to do? Uh, all right, guys, she's going to send a message. Okay. <laughs> I can't. I've rationed it I out in my Harry it. brain. Yeah. I, I've, I've tried. Harry will, will not, not do it at least once in the week, so sorry. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of like each night after she like spins the pistol and she's like, no, you can't, like not, don't do it, like, <laughs> and puts it back under the bed. Um, and for the ammo, I didn't have to go, did I go pick, didn't have to pick Oh, yeah, yeah, up, so you, or? yeah, you go and pick it up, sorry. Um, yeah, you go and pick it up, no problem, um, and find that there's a good supply there, um, a little less than you would hope for, but you've got enough to make around, um, 75 shells okay yeah so probably as she's you know crafting these over and over and over again she's like come on like you you can't keep doing this um so she picks up the pistol and kind of squeezes the handle and just says um then a little bit but uh just checking in um Getting lots of good work here, done here, um, on armor and things like that. But that's all of you. 
You hear that uh, familiar crash of waves and Jen's voice come through. Well, it's good to hear you're working hard. I know you always do. There are exciting times. I'm... Well, you could say I'm circumnavigating the world. I'll see you on the other side. That's where it ends. She'll kind of be like, sorry, Kanan. <laughs> like, <laughs> put the gun away and go back to working on her ammo. Yeah. Okay. Sounds and that's great. all for me. Cool. Um, all right. Next up is Kanan. Yes. Alrighty. So, start of the week. Uh, Kanan wants to check in with Oots. Okay. Uh, privately. So this could be like after work or before work or like on a break or something. Just any time she can get him alone. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I would say towards the end of the day, you know, everybody's kind of getting getting off work and, and packing their stuff up. You're in the barracks, and you find Oots again in his office, just finishing up some paperwork, but you can enter in there. Yeah, Kanan's gonna walk in and close the door gently. Okay. Say, uh, Oots. Yes. Um, I know you and I have talked uh, kind of extensively about the justice of the area, you might say. Yes. I was wondering if I could pick your brain a bit. Ask away. Okay. Um, I don't know. We've been tiptoeing around it quite a bit. I would just like to know definitively where you stand on um, current leadership here in Haverstein. Where I stand? What do you mean? If there was an opportunity to change the law of the land here, would you do it? How and why? I think that changing the law of the land would be a good thing. I think that there are many things here that are outdated, that are inefficient, that end up in great suffering for many people. I think that the way to change it is by changing it from the inside. By bringing in people who believe in true justice, who want to change things for the better, and putting them in positions of authority and power. I think... I don't know. I would like to change it. Um, I think there, well, to enforce a law sometimes requires a bit of, um, what shall we say? force and for there to be law there must be reinforcement force <laughs> um, and to change it in this situation will require more so because the law isn't doesn't allow people to change it peacefully if you know what I mean. I think I do. 
However, I'm not sure that I agree. That one of the reasons that I joined the guards, and one of the reasons I presume you've joined the guards, is to make a difference. To see these people working day in and day out, and to help them personally. Now, we may not always be perfect in how we do that, but that is the legal way. If you're suggesting something other than the legal way, that is a different conversation. Before we continue this any further, um, I know I asked you about the Zene. Yes. Um, I knew a man named uh, Corzin Fate Draw, who wasn't much of a man, but could meddle with people's minds and memories and who they were. Could something like this have happened to Zene? Well, what you're describing sounds like something out of fantasy, some sort of work of fiction, but Presuming that that kind of thing exists, then I don't see why not. It could happen to any one of us at any time, right? Yeah, but there's... I don't know, something about those people that seems... shattered. I think Zene has been the victim of this system. I think that she sees it no longer as the enemy, but instead regards it as the only path to safety. She believes that she made the mistake that got her partner killed. And so the only way to safety is to enforce and support the system as much as possible to prove that she is not a traitor. So, in this peaceful um, direction you'd rather take, how do you suppose um, we address issues of boundless tyranny? Um, an angel, perhaps, that maybe has power that, or a stance that can't be affected by talking. And is it worth the lives between here and now to wait to do that? I mean, how long, I mean, is there any hope for Zane in believing in a different system? Is there hope for I don't know, all the people whose lives have been lost, whose stories will never be told. I mean, you guys lost a huge member of the Scribes weeks ago. And you're not even able to utter a word about him. So how are you supposed to take this completely peacefully without any sort of a fight? That, to me, seems like a dream some delusion you've put in front of yourself so that you don't feel bad for not taking up a stance. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Okay. Takes a long moment, sits back. You can see he's kind of considering. Takes a deep breath and says, perhaps you are right, Lana. Perhaps, perhaps I have been idealistic. The loss of Arcturus was devastating, both in terms of justice and he was a dear friend that we can't even speak his name without fear of looking over our shoulders is dire indeed 
but I fail to see how betraying what I believe will bring about the end that I hope for. How do you suppose it will be possible if we rise and fight to then establish a system of peace after? I think expressing the will to fight for something that's right and true is important, especially when you need to enforce it afterwards. You do it and you save the people you know you can, but I'm not sure everyone in the system is able to be saved or even wants it. Would it not be more merciful to let them leave or make them leave. You don't have to kill them. As long as you can make sure they stay out. You don't let a robber into your house just because they come in. You defend your house. We defend the city from people of this sort. Yet it seems that we've spent more time tearing the city apart from the inside than defending it from what's out. Make a persuasion check. Are we going to follow the trend of Kanan not being able to convince anyone? <laughs> Please, no! <laughs> no, it's pretty good. It takes a long moment. I kind of like... He has a few things on his desk, you know, a few like trinkets from you know previous stuff that he's done and awards and whatnot. He just kind of touches the things and considers them, pushes himself back from his desk a little bit. And Lana, I'm not sure that there are many who are ready to see things the way that you do, but for what it's worth, me and mine will stand with you. You can call on us when the time comes. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you know this person or if you're in contact with them, um, but a teacher at um, the necropolis has been Nensis? in contact with- Is that who you're talking about, Nensis? Yes, Nensis. He is for this, this belief, this revolution, or whatever it is that you're talking about? Um, I haven't... I don't know if you're able to... <laughs> if you don't know that he's... I don't know yet. I know he's a pacifist. Can't imagine what help he would be in a fight. Well... He... Could you possibly make sure that there are no guards at the message center near the necropolis in about, oh gosh, is it just over two weeks now? Yeah. Okay. I, I can, but why? Well, I don't want to betray Nensis' trust, but I've kind of already done that. Um, he's asked um, myself and a couple other people I know to destroy the message center, or at least the things in it. A smart decision. Eliminate the, the enemy's ability to communicate or monitor our communications. It's a very shrewd decision. Perhaps Nensis is not useless after all. Um, but, um, if I have your permission to talk with him, um, in a little bit I'm gonna need to be gone, and I don't think I can work here. Um, I also think it's safer for you if I don't. Um, so if you want to make a show of kicking me out or something, that's okay. 
Um, but at the end of this week, I need to meet with my people. I understand. At the end of this week, we'll, we'll throw you out of the barracks. Perfect. Be careful, Lana. Um, behind closed doors, you can call me Kanan. I'll stick with Lana. All right. <laughs> Good night, Oots. Good night. Thank you. All right. So you exit out, um, and you see Oots sit back down and kind of not do anything in particular. It looks like he's just kind of in thought. But you head out. Um... So, uh, what else would you like to do this week? Um... I think maybe the day after, or like a day and a half after, go and talk with Zine. Okay. Um, just kind of, I guess, checking in for the morning. Be like, uh, hi, Zine. Uh, do you have any particular tasks you want me on this morning? Lana Utz is your supervisor. Go talk to him. All right. Um... Well, <laughs> how are you doing? She is, as you approached her, she's looking at a paper and she sets it down and just looks you dead in the in the eye. What? I just wanted to know how you are doing personally. Why does that matter? Well, I figure we're all in this together, supporting the same... Uh, system so just wanted to see how you're holding up please go do your job <laughs> can i do an insight check on her i just sure. want to see if she yeah want to see if there's anything magical about her <laughs> <laughs> love you an arcana check that's what you're wanting to do You don't, I mean, you're not super well trained in magic, so you don't notice anything magical. Well, I'm gonna assu assume you're all right. Um, I'll go do my job. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and then. The day after, or like a day and a half after, um, I want to go and find Nensis and find the um, necropolis. Okay. I assume I've patrolled near the necropolis yeah, You know before. where it is, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and I mostly want to be able to map out wherever we're going. Like the... Um... Wherever you're going is in like the message center or? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's easy enough to do. Um, I'd say just make a survival check to see how good you can get this information down. Twelve. You get a pretty good sense. Um, you know, you don't have like a, a perfect map or anything like that, but you could get your way there if you needed to. Um, yeah, the whole place is kind of confusing, but yeah, you, you managed to find it well enough. Um, and then I want to find Nensis while I'm there. Okay. Yeah, while you're looking around, um, you know, a few people stop you and ask you, like, what you're doing because you're a guard and they're like, what are you doing here? But um, eventually you find Nensis kind of walking between areas, like he's going to or from class. Um, uh, pardon me, uh, Nensis? Uh, oh, uh, y yes, yes, yes. Um. I have some matters I needed to check with you if you have any free time. I see. Please walk with me. Hold on. All right. <laughs> Sneeze. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, what What do you need? Um, well, it's not really matters of the guard. Um, is here a good place to talk? 
he kind of looks around, and there's people walking around, but um, nobody's like paying attention. Uh, sh sure, yes. I don't see why not. All right. Um, I just wanted to ask more about the Order of Xenia that uh, was here. Yes, a history lesson. Yeah. Well, I'm not a historian, but what would you like to know? Why, why were they destroyed, and when were they destroyed? Well, the why is an easier question to answer than the when, I'm afraid. I, I don't know the specific timeline, but uh, why? Well, they refused to submit to the rule of Haversteep. They taught people things that they weren't supposed to teach. They promulgated ideas that were not supposed to be taught. So they were destroyed, as should happen. Mm. Yes, as they should be. Um, I was wondering if you knew anything about the magic. Um, I haven't taken lessons with them for a long time, and I'm having a difficult I can read the books just fine and do the magic just fine as far as making the images show, but I don't know how to make the book. And <laughs> Troy just like simply said when I was at the order in um, Falderstep, I didn't learn much but to heal mice and, and talk to people in another room. Um, I have a book recommendation for you, if you'd like. It may help you on this matter. Yes? Oh, please, come to my office. He leads you out, kind of right. directly off of the path that he was going. It's like a 90 degree turn. But you, he takes you over to that side of side building that I described for Naira. Um, you enter in that corner office. And he starts going through like his personal library, and you see him finally ah, pulls a book out, sets it on, and it's like a thick, you know, it's a big book, um, but it just says um, observations of the author. Uh, this should help you in writing. And pushes it towards you. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, should I read it now or? Unless you can read a thousand two hundred pages in a matter of seconds, I don't think you'll be able to. But take it with you. Consider uh, it my gift. Okay. Um, thank you. As you pick uh -huh. up the book and look, um, you recognize the script on this. You've seen books in this series before. In the Order of Xenia Library and Falderstep. There's a number of book series by the author. This was a long, yeah. long, long time ago, so. Yes, George. <laughs> a long, long time ago. <laughs> I saw you. <laughs> so, yeah, there was a number of books by the author. Um, so now you have observations of the author. Uh Thank you. Um, I will find some way to get this back to you. Um, Please keep it. Oh. Well, there's got to be something I can give you. I, don't, I can show you one of the books I have. Please. It's, it's all right. It's okay. going to a better place here. I've already read it. It's not doing me any good to have it sitting on the shelf. All right. Well... Just a second, Kanan will get into her bag. Is she able to carry that with all her? I'd say so, you can have a pack. Okay, yeah, she's gonna get into her bag, pull out her box, um, whoop, say an historium omnium nostrum, and uh, pop the book in there. 
close it real quick and back in her bag. Um, I keep things there for safekeeping. That's oh, good, which, good by the way, I have something that uh, maybe you'll recognize. And she'll pull out the locket from, oh gosh, the scary thing with the claws. <laughs> yeah, from the bone claw, yeah. He takes it and looks at it and flips it over. Uh, I don't recognize this, but I think that there was someone named Alexander. I'm surely there was someone named Alexander who lived here, but uh, at some point, maybe. But I don't know who. Maybe ask around if you're trying to return it to its owner. It seems that this kind of thing would would uh, bring someone a lot of comfort. Yes. Um, I'm going to put it in the box really fast again, though. Um, so she'll take it and pop it in there and be like, um, we found this in this hideous creature. Um, did the, the letters call it a bone claw? Yeah. Um, they called it a bone claw. Bone claw, very powerful creature. I assume this is up in Grey Witch. Yes. I understand, yes. Um, well, Grey Witch was meant to be an example, so. Okay. Uh, presumably, these are inhabitants from the city before or whatever, but bone claws are made from. The corrupted souls of those trying to achieve higher power. The corruption itself takes form and takes over the body of someone who is nearby. It transforms them into that. Corruption of those trying to attain higher power? Yeah. Okay. Um... Sorry, that just came to my head as I got into my box. Um, that's not really why I'm here. Um, but thank you for the information. Um, would someone here be trying to make that? There are a number of people who are always trying to create creatures like that. That is one of the primary focuses of necromancy. However, few are actually capable. Uh, only one that I knew of in particular. He lives in a large gray-stoned building nearby here. He carries a gigantic hammer. Oh! Tadriel's a necromancer? Well, he's a very para very powerful being who can dabble in any number of magical arts. He also happens to have a school nearby that is full of people training to be necromancers. Uh, yeah, of course. Example. Who would be giving the example? Um, so, the other night... You mentioned the tyranny that happens here, and I wondered if you had a plan, aside from involving messaging and such. I may. Um, there's someone I work with, <laughs> um, that is willing, ready and willing to help when the time comes. So someone finally pushed Oots over the edge, huh? <laughs> yeah. I wondered how long it would take. Well, that's good. Maybe he won't be useless this time. You both talk about each other as if you're useless. Well, one of us is right. About? 
the other. Or maybe you're both useful and you're just using each other for the wrong things. No. Okay. <laughs> um, but he mentioned not wanting to harm anyone, which was something you mentioned with this other mission. Yes. I think there's a bit of a problem with that in the grand scheme of things. There always is. My eleven are willing to fight. I am not. There's always those of us who stay back and heal those who need it. There are. That is not my gifting. I will help, but I will not inflict violence on others. Okay. Um, that's good to know. Um, I'm sure, well, do you know anyone else in the city who's involved in this? I think that might be too broad of a question, and I have class. Good luck in your searches. Right. Enjoy conducting your guard duties. I must go. Of course. Uh, thank you for the history lesson in guarding. <laughs> She'll walk away. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, okay, and then that's it aside from the end of the week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's not going to take time to go and find anyone. Um, she's just going to sit at her cot and, like, hold, rub the cuffs on her hands. Okay. Um, and just say, well... Thing, we're either doing something incredibly worth it or incredibly stupid, so... I just wish I had your advice to know which it was. Um, thank you. And... I hope maybe we can... prevent anyone else from the... life and imprisonment you had to live. And then she'll just lay down and go to bed. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, next up is Zarius. Zarius, what would you like to do? Uh, I think Zarius is going to, I mean, I don't really have all that much planned for him aside from hanging around the bar and then meeting with people, but he wants to go and find Nensis okay. at some point. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he'll. Cool. Yeah, easy enough to find Nensis. Um, you make your way around until you do, and uh, you find him um, passing through, like, near the marketplace, kind of in that, like, city square area. So. Um, okay. If at all possible, he would actually like to find him somewhere, like, maybe he'll pass by this time, but just somewhere a little more private. Sure, um, yeah. He wants to talk about the sending stuff. Yeah, that's easy enough. Um, you can find okay. him. He come in. He comes into the bar. So yeah, we he'll pull him aside at a table at the bar sometime. Um, hello. I did have a quick uh, question. Someone with capabilities to send messages, such as we were warned not to do. Um, I've heard two different things from two different people. Um. One says it's okay to do it within the city, as long as it doesn't leave the city. Um, do you know if that is true? Or... Communications within the city are not monitored. Anything that leaves the okay. borders of the territory is. Okay. Good to know. Um, just helps coordinate with all the different... Of course. ...people, groups here and there. All right, well, that's all I had. Um, Back to cleaning. Very good. <laughs> yeah. That's really all Zarius had, aside from okay. meeting with people. He'll, um... Yeah, that's it. Okay. One other thing, uh, as you're speaking with uh, Nensis, he says, 
do you know... Oh, actually. Sorry, never mind. You didn't go down that line. I don't know. Never no, mind. No, I don't. Um, nope. Okay, so, are you wanting to meet with anyone in particular? Or... No. Okay. All no, right. just the ones we've already done. Okay, so unless I have forgotten anybody, I think that's everybody's stuff concluded for the three weeks. Except for Canyon getting thrown out. But that'll happen after. Okay, so... Um, as the weeks come to a close... Canon, you first see, uh, as you're on a patrol outside the, uh, on the, around the, the borders of the city, you see a younger-looking human woman approaching, and you recognize Zeline. Um, she approaches, and you guys are outside at this point, so let me put you outside. There's no chirping birds. Come on. It's only crows in this land. Um... <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, she approaches, kind of, you know, hood up, covered. Um, you're, you're kind of obligated to approach people passing into the city. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'll walk up to her and be like, uh, "Pardon me. Uh, hello. Uh, what's your name?" Uh, my name is Zeline, and we will meet at that grove of trees we saw outside the front gates of the city. You remember? Right. After the weeding. Sounds like a plan. Very well. And she just heads back into the city. And she does this same kind of thing with each of you. She meets you, give you that very brief message, meet after the weeding at that grove of trees outside the city. Um, everybody except for Ezekiel. She doesn't know who you are. No, she does know who you are. She does meet with you. Um, she doesn't know... Sorry. She doesn't meet with Ezekiel about that, we'll say. So, um, no, I don't think so. No, she's not going to. But, Ezekiel, you can observe this meeting with um, Inaira, since you're stealthy enough. Um, so you can observe and listen in on this meeting if you would like to. Yes, although I thought perhaps, well, eh. If this is where you think is best, also he could he's probably gonna be looking around during the weeding as well, if that's a better time for that yeah. kind of perception. I don't know. Separate separate things are, are gonna happen. So this would be good. Gonna if happen. You're, yeah, so if you're if you're interested in overhearing this, then by all means. Um, I'm gonna say probably yes. <laughs> okay. Alright. So you overhear this meeting, it's just a very brief thing. Um, you see a, a younger human woman approach an Ira, um, and just exchange a few brief words which you managed to overhear just after the weeding, meet in the grove of trees outside of the front gates of the city. And that's it. Um, okay, yeah, he's like, pre he's like tending a grave, but he's also listening in, okay. but he's trying to make it look like he's not. So he has a can reason I, to be there. Can I, <laughs> can I look around? Could I, can I see you? Like, when I look around, could I see him? Go ahead and make a stealth check. If you're trying to Ooh, hide, me or, yes, me or them. Yeah, if you're tr if you're trying um, to hide, if you're just he's not trying to hide, but he is trying to be like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Nondescript. That's not okay. the word I'm looking for, but you know what? It, non conspicuous. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I'll consider that a stealth check. Okay. Twenty. Yeah, it looks like he's just. Yeah, I mean, you can see him in Ira, but it looks like he's just doing his job. It doesn't look like he's listening in. It doesn't look like he's focusing at all. It looks like he's just, you know, just chugging away with that shovel. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and so it happens with each of you. Uh, each of you are met by Zelene and given the same message. Um, so, one night uh, after that, um, Zarius, as you settle in and the weight of sleep sits heavily on you, Sorry, we're going to go back inside real quick. Um, as the weight of sleep sits heavily on you, you find yourself walking through the foggy world of a dream. 
the ethereal and somewhat fuzzy walls of the bar where you work surround you and you find yourself scrubbing yet another beer stain on a table. The tinkling of a bell on the door draws your attention and you look up to see a beautiful woman with long straight blonde hair and an athletic build, her body wrapped in a flowing drapey sort of dress made from pearl colored silk, totally at odds with the seedy stained interior of the bar. She looks around the space, a familiar sharpness in her blue eyes and once she gazes upon Once her gaze sets upon you, you feel a jolt of excitement, of energy, of adrenaline hit your gut, and at once the rest of the bar seems to fade away. All you can see is her. Um, She cants her head to the side slightly and holds her hand out towards you expectantly. Sorry, my dog's yipping in her sleep. Smell up! No. Um, She holds her hand out towards you expectantly, says, Come, Zarius, there are things you must see. Do you follow? Hey. Yeah. Yeah, I'll follow. Okay. As the two of you exit into the street, um, as you exit into the rainy and gray skied exterior of Haversteep, her still, her still holding your hand in hers, you feel the warmth extend from her hand into yours, filling your body with confidence and assuredness. The two of you walk along the exposed sidewalk, and the people passing by seem to pay you no heed, as if you're not really there. At one point, a pair of older women seem as if they'll bump right into you two, but just as you think they're going to crash against you, they simply pass right through you. Polyduck speaks, saying, I am sorry for my harshness in the past. I can see the scars I've left behind. You must understand that those are not my actions. I am but one of those pieces, or good. I was the first piece, torn out by my own volition. Now, I rest in a locket around my brother's neck, bound. Hopefully you'll be free soon. We haven't much time and there's still much you need to see. You continue walking and find yourselves passing by an older man carrying a shovel, Ezekiel. And Apollodux stops, placing her hand on his shoulder. This man will be a help to you, though he may not know it yet. He is tired, but still has fight in him. Let us continue. Two of you round several corners and eventually find yourselves outside of a blacksmith shop. She approaches one of the small squares of windows and peers inside and then gestures for you to do the same. Do you? Yeah. As you look in, you see the figure of Harriet and another human man who you now recognize to be the owner, uh, George, hammering away at some piece of red-hot metal. After a few moments, the human man turns away, leaving Harriet to finish the work. And he crouches down behind the counter, and uh, for a second before rising to his feet again, a small figurine clutched in his hand. Apolloduck sighs happily and says, Do you see? The figurine has completely articulable hands, and, you know, it's a very intricate thing. I already described it once. Um, He's made me. Well, a model of me anyway. He is my servant, like you are. Well, I should say, none are quite like you. Seek the others, and they will help you, Zarius. Are there others here? No. There were, but no. I didn't think that he would take too kindly to people like George and I. Please, we must continue. Our time together is ending. She passes along the side of the blacksmith shop and through the alley leading to the building's other face, and you see elaborate stained glass windows. Inside, you make out all kinds of jars, glasses, containers, and works of art, all made from glass, as well as brightly, a brightly glowing forge in the back. Apollodox opens the door and gestures for you to enter, and then follows behind. She says, We must hurry. We do not have long. She gathers her dress up and ascends the stairs in the middle of the room. Do you follow? Climbing the stairs, the hallway turns sharply before... I guess we're inside again, huh? Um, The hallway turns sharply before opening up into a fairly sizable loft-style bedroom. A large bed rests against the far wall, and numerous small crafts, trinkets, and tokens cover the tables and the supply barrels scattered about the space. Among these trinkets, you see a painting of what looks like a human man with his family, made up of his wife and two small girls. Looking around further, you see the human man alone in the bed. 
Just as you're starting to wonder what's going on, you sense movement in the darkened corner of the room. Only a shimmer at first, but the movement quickly materializes into a roughly human figure engulfed in dark red wings with horn tips. The figure grins a wicked smile at nothing in particular, and then licks its teeth while staring hungrily at the man in the bed. The wings fold behind the creature, revealing a slender female frame with piercing yellow eyes. The figure deftly and silently climbs atop the bed, and you notice that, strangely, the mattress and sheets are not disturbed by this. The figure crouches on the chest of the man in the bed, and Apollodox takes your hand, walking to the side so you can see better. The creature still does not seem to notice you. After a moment of the creature caressing the man's face and tracing claw-like hands along his head and chest, it leans forward and plants a heavy kiss on his lips, before softly cackling <laughs> and gently floating upwards off of him, then returning to the darkened corner and vanishing. Apollodux squeezes your hand, drawing your attention, and gestures towards the man in the bed, and you watch as a thick stripe of his hair fades from its deep brown to a pure, bright white. This is how they are chosen. The sacrifice gives my brother strength. If I am ever to be made whole, you must disrupt this selection. Do we just stop him from being killed? Or you must, like a... you must find the creature responsible for the selection. There's a pair of them. Our time has expired, I'm sorry. There are other parts of me in this region. Seek me out. I hope to see you soon. And she lets go of your hand and you feel yourself fading away into sleep's embrace. So, that happens. Great. Uh, uh, that's, you know, a cool dream. Fun, fun dream sequence. Yeah, fun, fun, uh, weird, succubus, fun, demon little lady. Dream. <laughs> Stealing people's hair color. That's that's really what it is. Yeah, it's just they they you know their hair is actually white because they're old and they're yeah. like taking it out of it. <gasps> oh the, my god! Yeah. But Ezekiel's okay. hair is already gray. <laughs> well, that's why Ezekiel so is and Darius. Chosen. I yeah. know we have a lot of. Harriet <laughs> doesn't have hair. <laughs> I can't be weeded. That is a genuine question. For the weeding, when they don't have hair, yeah. do you get like a white stripe on your body? Your skin? <laughs> Presumably. Okay, so um, the next day, as you all separately at your different areas, notice everybody kind of exiting the buildings. You find yourselves exiting as well. It's kind of everybody's going out. You see a huge crowd has turned out all along that spiraling path that leads throughout the entire city. It seems that everyone, young and old, rich and poor, has gathered along that road to watch the procession of the weeding. Um, I forgot something prior to this, I'm sorry. So, unhear that real quick. Um, <laughs> uh, the next day, of course, Harriet, you don't know this, but the next day, um, David comes bursting into the blacksmith shop very early in the morning with a hat on. And he's, he's very, oh, no. he seems very distressed, very disturbed, very panicked. Uh, um, sir, could I help you with something? I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't think so. Um, and George comes uh, up I might be. <laughs> the, the two of them together, or the two of you together kind of look and George says, well, David, what's, what's going on? David says, uh, uh, well, he takes the hat off, and you see that white shock of hair. It seems I've been selected. Uh, oh. I, I don't know what to do. Um, please help. Please just help me. I just... drink tea, David. We could talk over that, maybe. At this time, Kanan, you and several other guards 
push open the door to the blacksmith shop. Under Utz's instruction, Utz says, There, grab the selection. What do you do, Kanan? Um, this is the one with the... Yes. David. Kanan will... You have been selected. You can grab him while he's doing this. But David, you have been selected for the weeding. Please come with us. Please comply. Kanan's got a hold of them. And if he fights, she'll try try to stunning strike him. Okay. Yeah, there's another... I mean, it's several of you guards are there. Um, as well as there are several scries outside. So, you know, big heavyweights out there. Um, but yeah. He, he doesn't doesn't fight. Um, he just looks kind of defeated. Um, it says, very well. Please. Sorry to disturb your business, George, but the weeding is about to commence. So, please go outside. And George kind of nods knowingly and gathers like a, you know, jacket and hood and everything. And the rest of the guards in that whole retinue heads outside, um, leaving Harriet and George alone in the blacksmith shop. Well, we'd better go outside, watch the proceeding. Uh, so, I go grab my bag. She'll run and grab her bag and her gun and everything. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just making that clear, since she hadn't been keeping it trapped yeah. on her, that yeah. she has that. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Okay, so now, as you all separately to different areas, exit the different buildings, right? So now we're back to that. Um, so everyone seems to have gathered along that road that winds spiraling through the entire city until it gets to that center square. Um, the procession itself of that Canaan is involved in at this point... Um, is, uh, let me find the right thing here. All right. Um, the procession itself is a fairly sizable group of people. There's about a dozen guards, Kanan, Utz, and Zanae included. They all walk in ranks with the selection, David, in chains in front of them. Leading the group is a blonde half-elf woman who looks older, even for half-elf. You recognize her as Samara, Kanan. Um, she has a severe expression, and she's wearing the same style of functional but still ceremonial clothing that you saw Arcturus wearing, while pinning, uh, while pinned to the altar at the Order of Xenia. She's apparently the leader of the scries. Uh, flanking her on either side is her second and third in command, two more scries, each with heavy hoods co on covering their face. Each of the scries carry an elaborate staff with intricate runes and carvings etched from top to bottom. Behind all of this is a hulking, nearly eight-foot-tall figure, stalking deftly. Clothed in a beautiful and ornate hooded cloak left open in the front, revealing an incredibly muscular physique and shimmering marble-like skin. The cloak is mostly white with stripes of blue and whorls glimmering about it, and the figure has a golden chain around his neck with a sapphire-colored pendant and carries a golden dagger in his right hand. As the procession moves throughout the city, the people begin to follow along the road, creating a long column of, of observers. This continues throughout the entire city, the procession remaining utterly silent aside from David's tearful weeping and begging for mercy. The whole thing eventually culminates in with what seems like the entire population gathered around the massive center stage at the center of the city. The silence of the crowd is eerie against the gentle patter of rain, and each of you, aside from Kanan, has an opportunity to try to move about the crowd if you'd like to try to, try to get a better view. So if anyone would like to do so, or if you're just going to take any spot, it's up to you. And I would probably be closer... Okay, I'm gonna try to get a little closer. Yeah. Zarius is going to intentionally not be close. Like he's gonna be kind of far away, trying not to draw like any attention to himself at all. Okay. That's a good point. Never mind. <laughs> She's gonna be like in the back of the group. All right. <laughs> That's <a> dumb idea. <laughs> Easy enough. Harriet's sticking with George, not Zarius. Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> The boss man. Sorry, why did I say George? Okay. 
All right. Other so, Apolodex man. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Okay. So, Cannon, you are stuck holding one of the chains attached to David's back. They have, a, like, a harness on him, and you're stuck holding one of those. Zane receives word from the scribes at the front and gestures to you and Uths to approach and release the long chains you've been holding, leaving him in shackles. Do you do so? Do I have a choice? <laughs> I always have a choice. Yeah, I do it. As you do, David turns to look at you in the eyes, and you can see his face is puffy from crying, and his eyes are red and full of tears. He looks at you and whimpers a meek, Please, help me. Don't leave me like this. After a moment, Uts grabs one of David's arms and waits for you to do the same. Do you? Kan's gonna give a long, hard look at Oots as she slowly walks over to the other side and grabs his other arm, very slowly. Oots leads the three of you onto the stage and David's wailing grows louder. Um, soon you make it to the large post in the center and Oots grabs the ropes used to hold him. Um, we're gonna put this one on actually, sorry. Um, hold him in place, quickly lashing his hands and feet. Just as quickly, Oots makes eye contact with you and gestures that the two of you need to leave the stage. David sniffles, then says, I know that you're all condemning an innocent man to die. I believe in Haversteep more than most of you, even after they took my Brienne, my Wendy, my June. How can you sit by and do nothing? Please, someone just help me. Please. Ganon, you and Oots have descended the steps from the stage, and the procession is cleared, giving Tadriel plenty of room to approach. As he does, you can feel the energy of his presence encased within his body, the sheer power present there. He flips the hood off, this hunger in his glowing blue eyes, and he approaches David, who has grown silent from terror. Raising the dagger above his head, Tadriel whispers something. If any of you would like to see, you can make a perception check and we'll talk about it after. Yes, please! And then plunges the dagger into David's chest, the tip of the blade sticking out of his back and into the post behind him. A moment of silence passes, and um, Zarius and Kanan you can see the faintest wisps of blue-white energy rising from David's chest and pouring into Tadriel's eyes. He whispers again and withdraws the dagger, turns and leaves the stage. And after a few moments, the crowd begins to disperse. So for, um, I was just gonna say, yeah, so Zarius, you can lip read. Kanan, you could hear, because you're close enough. So what you, saw and heard respectively the first saying before he stabbed David said every man must meet his destiny and the second one after he had uh, absorbed that energy said through you I vanish my sorrow and yes Brandon so the crowd begins to disperse. And after maybe 10 or so minutes, the uh, the procession is dismissed formally. So the guards start to go their own way. Um, the scries head out. Tadrell is gone at this point. Um, but Oots doesn't let you leave yet, Kanan. And Zane is kind of hanging around the area as well. And after maybe another 10 minutes or so, he clears his throat. <coughs> uh, Kanan... I'm sorry, but you're fired. Simply can't tolerate your incompetence anymore. He gives you a wink and gestures that you, um, you know, start to remove the armor. I'll return this armor, and you can collect your last pay if you'd like. Otherwise, 
find somewhere else to work. And then I'll nod and just leave. Walking as long as she can, just holding a stair, stair with them. Okay. All right. Um, and that's where we're going to end the session. Because that's Oof. what I wrote. So. Can I real, real quick so I don't yeah. forget? Sure. Um, after everyone's gone, is the body still there? Like, is yeah, there still, anyone around except the body? Yeah, it's still pinned to the post. Okay. Could I try and when there's no one around, just walk up and leave just some sort of flower at, a, at his feet? Yeah. Like, just like passively, just like throw it? Yeah, yeah. You know? It's easy enough to do. Cool. So then, that's, that's, I just okay. didn't want to forget that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, that's, so that's the end of this session. Thanks everyone for joining us, and thank you especially to the players.